SmackDown, WWE, or AEWN, tune in to The Joe Cronin Show, live, live on YouTube, for review Raw and reaction. SmackDown. W. Joe Cronin and Jake Breakdown or all the action. W. All of it. The Joe Cronin Show, your source for wrestling opinions, news, and insanity. A wrestling podcast with attitude. Mature audiences only. Join our community of over 70,000 people. Subscribe free on YouTube to The Joe Cronin Show. Cassidy could be the guy that transcends the business. We talked about it. <laughs> He's got a band-aid on his head. Orange Cassidy with a looking a, looking looking a little ridiculous. With a band-aid on his head. Orange Cassidy with a band-aid on his head. What's up, wrestling fans? It is AEW. We got Jake DeMarco in the house tonight. I'm here. You're here. I have a swollen face from all the dental work. I would have much rather been worked on by Britt Baker. I got to be honest. But I don't know. I always like a guy doctor. I feel like the women doctors, they're like, man, you guys are such bitches. You know, they don't want to give us the Novocaine. You know, I want the Novocaine. I had I had nine shots of Novocaine today. Maybe a little bit more than that, actually. But I had at least nine shots of Novocaine when you added up today. It's pretty crazy. Pretty crazy. Uh, but we're going to be able to do this. And we're going to have... Uh, we're going to be ready. We're going to ha- we're gonna be able to do it. So that's, that's the good news. So what's up to everybody? I hope you guys are good. My voice is a little tame because of the, uh, obviously because of the, uh, Novocaine, but we'll get to it, man. Britt Baker is, um, you know, like, it's been great, I think, pretty much. A little cheesy stuff tonight. Okay stuff. What's up to the chat? What's up, Mike? First thing I want to do before I do anything is, uh, shout out to a couple people first of all first of all the $25 patrons we'll get to you guys a little bit later I want to thank you guys for going into the $25 producer level you should have your name down below in the description box Um, if not it will be updated tomorrow one more time for this month and it will continue through another 40 days because we were late on it this month so all the producers listed down below um, but yeah, I want to say thanks to Byron, man. He became a patron on patreon.com slash Joe Cronin show. Uh, what up to Byron? Uh, jumping over there. Shout out to clam baked our buddy, uh, clam baked who went up to the $5 spot. Thank you. Clam baked and everybody else who's been uh, jumping on Patreon. Thank you guys for the last uh, week. Um, my jaw is a little constricted, like I said, so it's a little painful, but, uh, I'm going to be able to talk. I'll just won't sound exactly as excited as usual, that's the reason. It's because I'm destroyed. Um, I will get to a few things. We got some donations rolling in via Super Chat. We'll get to the Super Chats. Hopefully, if you guys want, you can Super Chat uh, and we'll answer, talk about your questions, comments, whatever it is. Um, love to do it. Also, shout out to the members. We're going to be doing a members only chat coming up, uh, I think, tomorrow. I'm going to do it in the daytime, members-only chat, so make sure you guys are part of that. Get that green logo and get some of the badges and stuff like that. I wish I could give them to the patrons for free, but it doesn't let you do that. I don't know. So I thank you to the people that double up, like Jerome Spicer and everybody else. Muhammad Abdel, so many people have been great. Um, Thank you guys for doing that. Hit that like button if you like. Uh, AEW tonight, um, it's over. I I, uh, Right off the bat, I can tell you that I think... I think I was a bigger fan of last week, but last week was really pretty good for like the the COVID times. So 
Uh, there was a lot of craziness tonight, though. Uh, I, I thought tonight wasn't quite as good as last week. We had some uh, more more wrestling focus this week um, than last week, so more it made me laugh personally. I was more all about the matches that we got and some of the story as well. Some really good promos. My favorite thing was Britt Baker passing notes to Tony mm-hmm. throughout the night. She got kidnapped and ended up in a dumpster, which I actually thought was funny. That was kind of funny, man. Like she, for, like you know, having Swole steal her, and then she ends up in the dumpster, and she's gonna get, you know, she's on a friend timeout with Tony. And but, but the note she passed during the Anna J versus Abaddon match, she's like, that broad needs to find Jesus. For some reason, that it just caught me off guard. And yeah, that, that was, was funny, hilarious. Yeah, I haven't seen much of her before. I mean, she reminds me. I said once a long time ago, of like you know, just a female demon Finn Balor, but it works. She looked like and, she looked like Danny Filth, like to a team. yeah from Cradle of Filth. I mean, that kind of look too. And and I'm curious to see what we get from her though going forward. Is she going to be this purely indestructible monster like the Fiend, or is there going to be a bit more story behind her? We'll see. But I'm intrigued, and that's a good thing. And then I kind of felt bad at first i'm like well that sucks with anna jay because again she's someone i don't know a lot about but i like her character you know the initial presentation that that first presence of her they made you know, it seem like she was gonna package. squash somebody i was like oh is this, yeah, she's gonna so that's, a squash that's exactly match. how it felt so i was like oh it sucks when i'm here they are they're they're trying to spruce up the women's division not not only do we get one but we get two new women and you know somebody has to lose it's like oh well i figured they would have done this a bit more on a level playing field in the sense of, you know, have somebody else lose their match instead of it being a debut match, but, you know, not counting AEW Dark. And because I haven't watched Dark personally. Yeah, it was a little strange. I agree. It was weird. I was like, oh, wow. So I was like, okay. oh, it, but, it, but it, because they went with the story with the Dark Order coming out, you know, they, they prevented uh, Colt Cabana with the envelope for the match contract. And then they went ahead and they took Ana J in back with them. So, I it yes, it's poorly explained because why would you want to join the Dark Order? But this is something I've wanted to see for a, a long time with, you know, the Dark Order going and finding people and building them up and making them something. Give you a reason to be intrigued by them and, and find, you know, what is what is their motivations, what is their passion, what what makes them tick. Instead we've gotten a, a decent to piss poor Vince McMahon parody, you know, started off decent and then just got poorer as the weeks went by. You got a match with with uh, Moxley and then nothing. So the the Dark Order, as far as Brody Lee is concerned, has been all over the place. So hopefully they start recruiting more members and kind of toning things up and giving people a reason to want to join. You know, you come under our wing and we'll build you up for something. But I I I like that though. I like that she didn't just lose. There was a there was a purpose to her losing the debut match. Yeah. MJF match against Billy was probably my favorite of the night. That was an excellent match. A lot of a lot of great back and forth from those two. And I like that MJF still has those classic heel moments that he pulls out, you know, the ring to, to, to get the win. And the way it was all orchestrated with the distraction from Wardlow throwing the ring in, uh, you know, it, just the way they set it up, it was very, very smooth, so perfect in execution there yeah because i remember thinking like man they're gonna have to he's gonna have to really steal one here from billy gunn because even though mjf is the new young hop and coming guy something about billy gunn man when he's in there with billy gunn you're like i don't believe it i actually don't believe he can beat billy gunn kind of like i i feel like billy gunn should definitely win this even though mjf should be the guy they're pushing so how is this gonna go obviously he's gonna probably cheat somehow or something like that um so yeah, you know, against Billy Gunn, you know, it's 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 interesting that you'd put it, and I wonder why I wonder why he wouldn't more off face Billy Gunn's son. And I get that, like you know, well, that's probably what they'll get into to keep this MJF angle going. That'll probably be the next thing because his son will look for redemption. Yeah, maybe maybe that's what it is. I I just wonder because I always I I guess I'm valuing Billy Gunn in a different way. They're kind of valuing him as the legend, Billy Gunn, but you know he's old now. But it's like, dude, Billy Gunn can still really wrestle pretty damn good. It's amazing how good he is in the shape he's in, and you know he's a guy that could, that guy could, that guy could. It's almost like AEW kind of treats him like how WWE would treat him in a way. He's like that silly Billy Gunn guy who does the suck it uh, thing. Um, but I, I, I'm always, I've always waited for Billy. He's Gunn still a legend, to, yeah. But couldn't I feel like Billy Gunn could even like face Jericho in a big match? I feel like imagine that if you saw Billy Gunn. I wonder how it would go. 
Like, we've seen Dustin be able to do that. Dustin was always a mid-card guy. Why can't Billy Gunn ever face, like, you know, Jericho for, like, a major title? Like, and that can be the story, too, is like, yeah, w oh, now you want to try to be a world champion? You know, how'd that go for you in the other place? You know, you never made it there because you're always too busy telling someone to suck it or kissing another guy or marrying somebody or whatever the hell you do with your lips on your trousers. Um, you know, I, I, I may, I'm a self-made man. I'm tour the world. I do this and that. And what you're always just a joke, Billy. That's who you are. You got all the talent. Look at your muscles, your size, your strength, your agility. But you, you always took the, uh, the easy way out. Uh, you know what I mean? That type of thing. Um, and they could really build some kind of thing in rivalry maybe. And maybe the guy wins like a TNT belt. I mean, like, you know, you never know. Like, but I think they know that Billy Gunn's, you know, Billy Gunn's just working as a, as a coach uh, on the job training, right? He's really a coach and a producer, right? He's like the main producer and a coach, but, um, he's going out there and wrestling. It's kind of like a bonus. I get it. It's so it's a bonus. That's why he's not, yeah, whatever. But there's a part of me that's like, huh, man, maybe give him a, give him a little look for a second, you know, you know, maybe just see what happens for a second with Billy, but they, they're happy him up with a little bit, but and, and I forgot to mention before too, with the dark order, Evan Wright in the chat said it as well with Stu Grayson and evil Uno being back. I, I agree with him saying that they'll probably likely get a big tag push post fighter fest. So we'll oh, see yeah. what happens at fighter fest. And then going from there, I think they're going to have them go for the tag titles. I think they're going to start to, to make more of a big deal out of the dark order. So, We'll see if it if it if it starts to resonate with fans or generate any kind of heat, then they'll go with it. But if it flops, then it'll be done. though. no one wants Billy Gunn. Yeah, no, I, that's <laughs> right. No, but I mean, um, yeah, the chat the chat's not for Billy, but I see your point. Yeah, some people. He's are, a legend. But... I mean, he always stands out in my mind. Sadly, the you know, it, it's funny to think how he won King of the Ring and then The Rock just derailed him with that one promo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it buried him to shit. Billy was but never the best. But my name is Billy, you know. <laughs> you still laugh about that. Billy was never God, the greatest on the it promos. It doesn't matter what your name is. He, he wasn't, was good. but he had a certain presence. And, he was and good, though. He, he's good on the promo. Like, he's better now, though. He can grab a mic and be like, you know, whatever. But he's yeah, always, he's, you know what it is? is years have gone by. I think it's because, like, he can cut a decent promo, and he can, especially nowadays, because he's got that sort of old-school legend vernacular type of stuff. But he still always kind of like smiled when he, whenever he cut a promo, he would be smiling when he cut a promo, no matter what he did. Even if he was like, I'll come up there, I'll kick your ass. I'll take your wife and I'll, and I'll take all your money or something. But he would still have a smile on his face if he said that. So it's like the guy always had this sort of silly smile on his face, but I think it'd be cool if he had been able to win a belt, you know, maybe in AEW and then pass the torch by losing a belt, you know, like type of thing. But anyway, I'm just complaining about nothing that nobody nobody cares about what I'm talking about right now. I'm just literally just well, being no, like, how do we work Billy Gunn into this? He could be a really hot commodity, I'm he's just, sure. He's just so good. You're, you might be onto something. He's just damn good in the ring, man. But it was a really good opening to the show, starting off with the tag titles and, you know, the tag team champions being on, on screen again together. You know, we've, we've uh. seen them come back. Paige came back, what, week before? Diamond Dallas I believe Page? it was. So. No, uh, Hangman Page. <laughs> he was finally back on TV what, a week or two well, ago. Well, it's weird. So, we we talked it, we talked last week, I think, or something about like we're like, where the hell are the tag belts and what are they doing? It's almost like yeah, dude, so it's I don't know if you, together. I'm not saying I, I don't I'm not I don't I'm about to say this and it's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying anybody's listening to the show. I get so sick of all everybody saying that now. It's it's over with wrestling reviewers and everybody, and myself included. Nobody, nobody's listening to you really. Whatever. But the but what's interesting is every single time, we're like, what's up with this man? They really need this. The next week it happens. I don't know if you've noticed that. And what that tells me is that they're paying attention to what's going on. Like it's not that. It's not yeah. that they're listening to our show or someone else's show or whoever's show. It's that they're, I, I think that they're on the pulse of what's going on because we said, like, man, they just need heel commentary really bad. They need heel commentary. The next week, Jericho is on heel commentary. Um, yeah. This week, last week, they're, we're like, they're they listening gotta... with stories and angles. I, I yes, do give them credit. Everything. I mean, they delve into a lot of the silly stuff, which they have to walk more of a fine line with, but. They are improving. There might have been too I much tag team that. tonight. There was, they, you know, because we said what the hell happened to the tag team wrestling. And it seems like. See, I, I felt it was balanced. I, I didn't mind yeah. it as much tonight. How many tag matches did we one. get? Three, two? I think there was only two tag matches. Well, I know three because of the main event. Three. So. Oh, okay. 
Yeah, so like to me, like what they do a little bit is kind of what we're doing in America and all over the world right now, which is, you know, sometimes, unfortunately, when when we realize that we're neglecting something, we overcompensate for it. You know what I mean? Like everything is like that right now. Like, oh my God, we're mad about this. Well, let's take all this away. Like, and it's like you sort of had the right idea, but you went too far with it. Um, they do that a little bit to me. Like, like one week it's like, where was the tag? There was no like tag team titles or anything this week. What the hell happened? And then the next week it's all tag team stuff, which is fine because they mix it up so much that that is okay. But I think tonight I would I would have um, enjoyed one more like sort of side story thing, whatever. But it was a really good show. I thought it was a good show tonight. Um, again, like yeah, I, I'm I'm really high on this show tonight. And even the match that I I probably liked the least, which is the Young Bucks match, it still had a spot in it that was really really cool with them, you know, basically passing uh, havoc onto Kip Sabian. Mm-hmm. And then they had him perform the Melter Driver on his own teammate. That was bizarre. You know, they they both jumped and kicked him in the knees and took him down. I was like, <laughs> it was just a really cool moment. So good yeah, spot. I, I didn't even notice it. I was, I think I was looking down at my food or something because I was eating while I was watching the show, and I was trying to focus on eating because of how painful my jaw is and everything. And I'm like, uh, and then I looked up and I didn't even see it. And then I looked at the chat and somebody in the chat said that's something weird about him hitting his opponent or partner with it or whatever. And I went, what? I missed it. And so then I rewound it and watched it and laughed at it. But I was like, wow, I would have missed it. I would have <laughs> yeah, totally was, missed that. Really... So don't remember who it was in the chat, but thank you for saying that because I, I wouldn't have caught well, it. I, I hate it. It your fucking else. guts. I'll kick your ass, motherfucker. <laughs> what was that, Jake? I said, no, I'm glad they pointed that out. I'm glad you didn't miss it because it was yeah. a hell of a moment. Yeah, Looking, I would have been know. pissed if I missed that because I would have said, innovative. what are you talking about? Like. And it was, I looked down for about 15 seconds, so I would have missed it. So, yeah, shout out to whoever typed that in the chat. But, uh, you know, if we start off right at the top, you know, I liked the opening. I liked having the tag champions open the show. Um, The Natural Nightmares are not any any team that I'm crazy to see. I mean, I do like, obviously, Dustin, but I'm not that high on the on the marks of QT you know what? Marshall. I gotta be honest like QT Marshall I found annoying at first because p- kind of the same way people thought I was annoying when Tommy NC was doing his whole thing like like this guy just tagged along with Cody and he brought him back to life almost like the, all these other guys are wrestling this guy kind of gave up now they bring him out but I'll, he really tried some things tonight that was really interesting to me he was like doing all this weird shit like like he and then that weird like no look diving spaceman over the top rope thing that he has no business doing um he's gonna land on his head on the apron someday um that stuff was wacky to me i was like whoa this guy because like i'm looking at him as like a guy like almost my age he's probably older than me actually but like a guy who was gonna be a wrestler and then it didn't work out and he no he gave up to do other things and now all of a sudden he's back and he's getting this chance. Like it's it's so it's it's a little we- it's it's like it's like on Star Trek: The Next Generation, Wesley Crusher's the kid, and like a, a lot of adults didn't like the kid, but as a kid I loved Wesley because I was like, that could be me. Like that's like me. I could be on the Enterprise, and just like anybody, you know, different people. Sometimes you identify with someone because they look like you or whatever. Like maybe like somebody who's like. Whatever, you get the idea. So, like, QT Marshall's, like, someone, like, I, I'm relating to that. Like, oh, this guy's getting a chance, and he's, like, living this dream he never thought he would have in a way. Um, but, no, he, I found him annoying at first, too, and I thought he was kind of I thought it was kind of dumb and everything, too. But I, I actually thought they were all right. Now, Dustin took some knees to the head. Did you see the that? Omega caught him in the fucking yes, head with a couple yes, of knees. that looked harsh. Yeah, and then it happened to Cody later. <laughs> like, these guys keep getting waffled. Yeah. Uh, when he landed the QT special on Omega 2 on the floor, that looked like it hurt as well. That was a hard yeah. landing. Is that that, that reverse? A little over halfway. Is that that diving spaceman thing he does over the top rope? Yeah, yeah, over the top rope. Okay, yeah. He, I think, uh, yeah, I've seen other wrestlers do it, and they usually do it with this like really athletic fluidity. He kind of does it with like a falling crash test dummy Twin Towers uh, suicide. You know, it's very... Uh, <laughs> yeah, really... He hit a really good diamond cutter too at one point that was yes. impressive. I was like, damn, that looks really good. Classic too. type of diamond cutter. Like he caught him with it. Yeah, it was that was that well that was, that's good because they were like, Oh, Diamond Dallas Page gave him the move and all these things. So you better you know, so he looked like he 
was really training to do it. You know, he really did. Yeah. He looked like, you know, he looks like a guy who's, and they could talk about that. So, like, I don't know. I, and that's I, the thing I was getting at. He's not someone that I'm usually very high up on, but he was yeah. impressive tonight. And and that's kind of the, the epitome of tonight. You know, if I had to say one word, I would say it was, it, it impressed me. You know, they did. They pulled out some of the stops that I usually question, and they had a good bit of storytelling, some really good matches. It, it was it was a fairly balanced show. There, there was a little bit of comedy. I felt like there was something for everybody, as we usually say. But tonight really was, you know, exemplary of that. Yeah, I thought so too. Let's set up the donations. I gotta pay the bills. What are the fuck? What are the? What are you guys? What are you guys up to today? How are you all doing? Did you guys have doctor's appointments, dentist appointments, kids appointments? Are you living at home by yourself? Did you just get done taking a dump? What's going on in the chat? Hit that like button if you guys can. Um, yeah, I went to the dentist and they 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 did all this stuff. I'll talk about it later. We'll keep talking about the wrestling, but um, a lot of people asked. A lot of people asking about me and Jake doing the Last Ride documentary review. Last episode's coming Sunday, I think. So, I yeah, guess Sunday's the last one. It, yeah, it would have been cool, like if we were available enough to have done like after episode one review, two, three. Obviously, that'd be good for the algorithm. But um, I think what we're gonna end up doing is probably just an overall review of how we thought of the whole thing. So we'll probably hit that up at some point and get that recorded. Um, our podcast that me and Jake did is up on uh, Patreon from a couple days ago. Went up on Tuesday, and guess what? For the people that don't know, that aren't aware of this, this is a huge breaking news. Amazing. This is fucking phenomenal. Patreon added a search feature. They added a search feature, so now you can click on the search post. You can type in any episode of Corrupted or anything else I've ever done. You can type in any song name, thing name, whatever. Over friggin' 1,500 posts. And anything you were always looking for, you just type it in there. It pops up for you. It's awesome. They finally put a search feature in. Can you believe there never was one? So you have to scroll down hundreds of things. And on your phone, it would glitch and stop loading. So you can never get to early episodes unless I link them to you or you search by month, which is something they added a little while back too. But finally, they went the full route the right way. And now you can search any podcast, any program, any video monetize this audio any specific song blumpkin you know all that stuff um donation songs whatever it's all there to search awesome stuff by patreon finally it took them long enough but thank you god it's there so you guys can search it and get the most out of patreon man so check that out if you're somebody who left patreon because you were like ah, i can't find all the old stuff really you know um that sucks well now they've finally oh my god fixed it after four years of me tweeting and bitching, let's go to the donations. Speaking of the bills, super chat, super chat. We JCS foot rub in the house. What's up? Woo! How you doing, man? Yeah, I need you guys to speak for me because I can't be too loud tonight with this cat with this uh, tooth thing. The dentist was like, "This is <laughs> this sucks." Like, like he told me, he's like, "This is the worst I've seen like in a while." I didn't watch AU because it is for pussy fags. Oh. NXT was simply amazing tonight, a 16 out of 10. Wow. Keith Lee's dick looked amazing tonight. Santa Escobar's faction is going to be fun. And on air, you a zombie, how gay and homosexual. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> F, he said F Tony Khan uh, WWE better than AEW Biatch uh, Thank you for the 666 We love Google and China We love Google uh, Thank you so much uh, WWE better than AEW I haven't seen uh, NXT yet I will watch NXT We'll see what happens We'll see what's up Here we go um, About to get it man Here we Sounds go. like it was about pretty good it, though Here we go Here we go Here we go Oh, oh, oh No TNT title match was legit. Ricky Starks needs to be signed 8.5 out of 10 show overall. Wow. TNT title match was legit. Ricky Starks needed to be signed 8.5 out of 10 show overall. Didn't from they sign Ms. him? Ms. Isn't, isn't that what everybody was saying the other day in the chat? I thought. They did? I thought. I could have sworn somebody brought that up in the chat the other night. Wow. Saying that he was signed. I could swear. I'll double check. I got to check that out. He looked like a fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean he looked good in the ring, but uh, he just looked like a peckerhead when he first came out. I was like, this guy is gonna get his ass kicked. What's his name again? Um, I'm being such an ass. Um, Ricky Starks. 
Ricky Starks. Let me look up Ricky Starks. What happened to that diversity? Okay, Ricky Starks. Here he is. Here he is. Yeah, he kind of looks like a dingus. I mean, I'm just going by what he looks like. He could be a, he's a great wrestler, maybe. He looks like a dink. I, it's just his, what he looks like. I don't know. Some, he's irritating me. He irritates the hell out of me. It's just he's got that certain look to himself. He looks more preppish, I guess you could say. Yeah. It looks like um, if I took a shit and I really hated it, like I was like, you know, <laughs> I'm really angry at what just happened in this bathroom. Like I'm really mad at this. Like that's what I'm, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I'm trying to think of other insults to say. <laughs> we'll like, blame it on the Novocaine. I'm surprised you're speaking as well. Yeah, as I mean, I'm a little fucked up from the Novocaine, no doubt about it. Now, yeah, he's got that preppy look like that. But MJF has that too. I used to think that about MJF a little bit. So this guy could be badass. MJF, because I, think I love MJF. Cocky yeah. look. This guy has more of that pretentious, affluent look, I feel. Yeah. No, no. He's I, you know, he's really good, though. I'm just kidding around. But no, he's... um. But would you? It was a great match. Do you think sure. that this was? Is this the best match? Did he have the best match with Cody tonight of the uh, TNT Championship, or was last week better? What do you think? Well, that's a good question. It's close. Um, I think the one with Jungle Boy was probably the best. Really? Wow. I thought. Yeah. I thought. La I think I thought last week's was better than Jungle Boy. So we'd really be off now. Yeah, there's something about that one that he had that just had a certain. I don't know, piqued my interest, basically. That, that's that's stuck in my head tonight for this show, but that's the truth. So that one that one would uh, reign supreme for me. He does have a, a very interesting look, though. Neo goes, are you gay? Only gay men criticize other men based on their looks. Really? <laughs> I guess I'm gay. That's half, that's half of wrestling. I'm definitely gay then, yeah. Well, Pat Buck, Bunch remember, according to Ryback. up sexy guys <laughs> You're right. going at it. According to Pat Buck, Ryback uh, wrestled with that old guy, you know, and gobbled him up and for money. And by the way, Pat Buck rehired by WWE. Yes, I was going to bring that up before, too. So, so funny, you know. Ryback, sorry. Remember when Ryback was going to get Pat Buck fired and, and then he did. He actually got released. They hired him back. So yeah, like, he was he was only furloughed. But I mean, it seems like they're going to start rehiring these furloughed employees soon. They have a four plan step to get everything back in order, so we'll see what happens. Oh, well, we got a call coming in. I didn't even know the uh I didn't even know I was on. Let me let me take the call here. Four seven five is on the phone. Hello. Hi, Joe. I was wondering what you thought about AEW and the next C tonight. What show did you think was better overall? I, you know, to be honest, I didn't watch NXT tonight. Um I had it out of the oh, corner of my eye. I tried, but sometimes I get to watch both, but tonight I didn't. Did you watch either one? No, I was out all night. Um, I was doing stuff for a graduation, you know. So, well, happy graduation. Um, thank you, man. You, when you when you get done watching them, you tell me what you thought, and then and I oh, actually, you know what? Tell Jake what you thought on Twitter. All right. Um, I follow you on Twitter. I think you know me. WWE AEW news. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. Tell um, but tweet Jake though, Jake DeMarco, and tell him all these dirty secrets about me. Real sexy ones. <laughs> All right, man. Thanks for the call. What the hell, man? I didn't. But congratulations on the graduation. Last time you talked to Pat, like it's pretty badass. Let's go listen to Ryback's um, commentary here and laugh at it again because, you know, by the way, this kind of exposes what a coward weirdo Ryback is because he's like, I'm gonna get you fired, and then they actually let the guy go. And this is like eight months ago, right? This is like eight months ago. He says he's gonna get Pat Buck fired. Pat Buck doesn't get fired, but then he does get then let go. Then he gets go. furloughed. Yeah. Then he gets furloughed. Then he gets brought back. So that shows you, like, wow. I guess Ryback, your powers are really working right now. I just personally let him know the other day that, would, that I'm going to personally get him fired when I'm fucking healthy. The last time you talked to Pat, like I uh, sent him a message and just personally good. let him know the other day that I'm going to personally get him fired when I'm fucking healthy if he doesn't get fired before that and enjoy the ride short term that he's up there. So, and I know the, uh, his buddy wants to say you're supposed to be a motivational secret or uh, speaker and 
be positive. I am, but there, I, I'm also, I don't put up with little bitches and I'm a fighter at the end of the day. And if a guy's going to run his mouth and Pat was running his mouth, to other promoters is speaking ill of me that I'm, that I'm an asshole and that I'm horrible to work with. All I say is ask any promoter I've ever worked for what the story was. And you're not, the, the, the proof is in the pudding of it. These people robbed his buddy KM and fucking Pat and all these other crew of guys were doing <laughs> homosexual wrestling activities with an old man and robbed him of nearly a million dollars. <laughs> what an I, accusation to make, dude, too. Dude, I can never get over that. By the way, for the people that don't know why I'm so interested in Pat Buck and Ryback, it's because in this video that you can see right on your screen, this is the time I, this is when I went up to Ryback to try to square away all the beef we had. And I walked up to Ryback and tried to apologize to him and explain that my show is a joke and I was doing comedy and he shouldn't have been offended by it. And I hope he, you know, can forgive me for that. And he's all right. And if he, only you were a fat white girl standing in front of a kiddie pool, then he right. would have been okay with you. Well, and he was so mad and you can tell by the look on Pat's face and there he is. There's Pat Buck right there. And JD was filming because he, I didn't even know he was filming, by the way. JD snuck his little camera on. I didn't even know it. Thank God he did get this on tape because I thought it, I thought we'd never have this on tape. And, um, and there's Wade Barrett, who's just, they're both looking like, here goes fucking Ryback again. We deal with this all the time from him. And then you do an impersonation on your show. And then you do an impersonation on your show. By the way, at that point, you know, I did one impersonation of him and then I had a friend call in and do an impersonation of him and that's the one he heard. So he actually, Ryback actually never heard me do the impression of him. They heard someone else do it and he's yelling at me that you did an impersonation on my show and I'm like, I didn't do a caller did that. It's fucking, I didn't, I don't know what they were going to say. And that was you put out, no, but it's you. You make the decision to do it. Don't blame it on your fucking producer. Look at Pat Buck, look at Pat Buck. Oh man, he's got the, he's got the uh, Sean Ross sap eyes too, by the way. Well, they're almost almost getting the Cyclops there. It's fucking, it's disrespectful on so many levels. It's disrespectful on so many levels. And then the next day on my podcast, I'm going to say that I hope you die. So I'm really mad that you made fun of me for like making fun, for flipping out on you, Joe. So I flipped out on you for no reason. And then you made fun of that. That's fucking crazy. And then tomorrow, after I rant on you right now, I'm going to then, on my podcast, wish that you die and and say that I, I have visions of killing you because that, that's okay because I'm a hypocritical weirdo. Yeah. And I'm going to call and I'm going to do my <laughs> best to get Pat Buck fired by WWE because I got in a fight with my friend Pat Buck and I'm going to try to get my friend Pat Buck fired from WWE even though Joe Cronin warned me about Pat Buck two years ago and I shit on Joe Cronin for warning me about Pat Buck. That's right, Ryback. We exposed what Pat Buck did to you two years ago, or three years ago now, four years ago, whatever it's been, and you didn't listen, and now you hate him all of a sudden, and you're going to get him fired from his job, which is weird. Um, why, why would you get someone fired from their job just because you don't like them or whatever? That's bizarre. Uh, talking about these homosexual things with an old man for a million dollars, and I'm the one who needs to be positive. Uh, you don't know me and how fucking hard I work for this. And you, a guy that you're a fucking fan. And I want you're a fucking fan. He doesn't know that I fucking wrestled and I did all this stuff too, but that's fine. You, you've never done this. I mean, shit. I've never done this. I have done this. People like you that do this shit that give me a bad image. It's people like you that give me a bad image. Uh. No, you give you a bad image. You give you a bad image, Ryan Ryback. You give you a bad image. Right, botch. I will finish in it. A million times I tried to get the make up with that guy, and he never, he never just blocked me left and right. Um, and then he's like, "Oh, you go back and oh. forth." I'm like, "Yeah, you go back and forth." So the bottom line is, Pat Buck is rehired by WWE. So Pat Buck is back in WWE, and the only reason why I played this clip was to uh, show you who Pat Buck is, in case you didn't. Well, know Michael Allen Rubin in the chat is right. He said someone's a little too hypersensitive. He's a celebrity for God's sakes. Tell him to lighten up. Anytime anything said in a critical stance, oh my God, he loses it. He'll dedicate a whole show just about on on one bit of gossip. Well, so. I mean, listen, I'm not past that either. But the point is, like, you, oh, you know, this is petty though. You know, if if Ryback had been shitting on me, or if somebody had been shitting on me, and they came up to me. Like and they were like, you've hey. had it happen. You've had trolls. Yeah, yeah. I've come had people to you and be like, hey, I was. I hope you know. Like I originally came from. <laughs> you know, I was just joking initially. Things got out of hand, and 
and you Dude, buried the hatchet. There's been people so that have done had something similar. There's been people that have done crazy stuff to me that like that is like actually really dangerous and bad stuff. And they've come to me and been like, "Hey, man, I'm sorry about that. I hope everything's cool or whatever." And I go, "Yeah, man, it's all right, whatever." You know, but Ryback couldn't forgive me for telling him that his producer was an asshole and that, uh, you know, they wanted two, two grand from us or whatever, or whatever it was, or it was a joke, whatever I said, but he didn't, he's retarded. Anyway, whatever. Let's go back to AEW, but the bottom line is Pat Buck is rehired by WWE as a producer. He's back there. So now he can go in the back and he can wrestle old men. It'll be a great time. Uh, he can, maybe he's wrestling. Maybe that's how he got hired. Did anybody ever think about that? Since Ryback says he wrestles old men for millions of dollars, is that how good he is? I mean, does anybody else think that maybe Vince heard about this? Or maybe um, uh, there's another Pat. Pat Patterson. Maybe Pat. Yeah. You don't think Pat Patterson heard about this guy wrestling old men, jerking them off, and he was like, oh, my God, we got to get that guy here. And, I mean, you know, let's just think. Let's use our heads. Vince McMahon heard about a sexual talent from Pat Buck, and that's let's bring him on. Three three nine, hello, you're on the phone. Yo. All right. Jesus. Uh, I was jamming out. Let's go to a donation. Yeah, yeah let's bring him back. Oh shit. oh shit! What if the turkeys hate us? What if they filleted us? Here you go, brother. What if they killed us? Pat and Sna Pat children. Suck. Pat Snack. What if the turkeys ate the us? Do that? What if they filleted us? If the turkeys ate us? If they had to hate us? Well, Thanksgiving was a little bit different. Instead, the turkeys ate us. They gobbled us apart. But first, they'd eat our nuts. Our nuts. Our nuts. And then they'd our nuts. eat our, our butts. Our butts. Our butts. Our butts. The turkeys our nuts. ate us. Go ahead and eat them up. Go ahead what and eat if, them up. What if? What if the turkeys ate us? Ooh, that hurts too. What if the turkeys ate us? Instead of mashed potatoes, instead of going out for some hangers. I hate yo fucking. Pretty solid up. show tonight. Love the signings of Ricky Starks and Abaddon. Especially Abaddon, I think she could be huge for the women's division. The ending with Orange Cassidy beating Jericho was great. Boosted my grade from a six to six point five out of ten. <laughs> the Soundwave 92 coming in with a $29 hot one. Thank you, Soundwave. Let's let's talk about that. Thank you, Soundwave, for the donation, man. Without the donations, I'd be dead. And I owe a lot of money to the uh, the dental man, so I wouldn't have had that money if not for the donations. I would have had to uh, pee in my own tooth or whatever they say. Um, what did you think? Did you like the um, attack at the end by Orange Cassidy? Loved it, and as, as as I said too, you know, many times in the show, I wasn't an Orange Cassidy fan going into him being in AEW. I always found the gimmick to be kind of, you know, that aloof, not a care given attitude didn't really work for me. But he's handled well in AEW. I don't think they've done anything so far with him. I started liking it, and I know you'd laugh too when we'd see him in the back with the thumbs up. Like you know, he'd yeah. be in the bathroom. They'd find him in random places. Like that was entertaining. And then seeing him wrestle in the ring, like he had that great match against um, Christ. Uh, yeah, he you know, fought Christ. Back, you know, and, oh, my God. No. That was a fantastic match. And from there, you know, he's just been more and more entertaining. So I think they're doing a great job with him. And I know there's a question coming up in the chat shortly, and he would certainly be my answer. Who's the first person you bring out in front of a huge audience? Orange Cassidy. Best friends in him. He's He's probably one of the most over people right now. And they, they can really capitalize on his 
star power. They just have to be careful not to overexpose him or make the gimmick too he's silly. Almost a little bit like with the way the crowd could get with him and supporting him. He's almost got a Daniel Bryan with a gimmick vibe. Yes. Yes. He has that ultimate, you know, underdog baby face gimmick going. Just that weird excitement, man. And I and I hated I, I hated Orange Cassidy a lot. I mean, I'm not okay. I didn't hate. I don't hate anybody, but I, I didn't hate him. But I was kind of like, oh my god, I don't like this. On the indies, I wasn't a big fan of it. But like you said, what they've done translating him in AEW, he got the crap beat out of him most of the time. Every time, so it was. Yeah, yeah it was Pack. I couldn't think of Pack. Yeah, oh I couldn't yeah, think of his yeah. name. I always. Man, they are missing that yeah. guy right now. They need to get. I mean, oh, he they're, they're missing a lot of people, and there's issues at hand now with with flights and things of that nature. So Kevin Owens for WWE said that he's not going to be flying in uh, for the tapings. Apparently, there's no heat on him for doing this since he was polite about it. But at uh, Orlando's international airport, they tested 500 employees, and more than 50 percent, 260 in all, tested positive this week for COVID. What? Yeah. So what in WWE? Uh, no, no, no. In in the airport, five hundred oh, staff of Jesus. Orlando International Airport. So just traveling in and out of the airport, yeah, for flights, for tapings, and things like that, has turned into a really big risk. I mean, as much of things have slowed down somewhat, they really haven't. I mean, there's no vaccine, there's no cure, there's no proven therapy that works. Social distancing and lockdowns have helped, but they didn't solve the problem, especially in Florida. It says, and they're right. So now you have people refusing to, to go back to WWE to work. I'm curious how much more this affects for AEW because now they're limiting uh, flights coming out of Orlando. So, yeah, um, I mean, we'll see what happens in the future with tapings and whatnot. But WWE wants to get back to taping weekly shows and arenas live by September. Their four part plan. That's that's the last part that they want to achieve. So. Well, Dr. Fauci today recommended that baseball wrap it up by October 1st or something that he was like, yeah, they're window. expecting a second wave. So the train can yeah. come off the rails for that. So what happens to the arenas then? So yeah, if they Dr. go ahead Fauci, and, and they start bringing people back and now there's a huge second wave. Exactly. Yeah. So if Dr. Fauci thinks that, Oh my God, you know, yeah, you need to wrap baseball up by the end of September. That's what he's telling them. Like, well, you better start the season cause this is not going to be good. And well, if that's okay, the case, that was what, since March. There's been 500. What the hell is football going to do? Either way, yeah. what's football going to do? Football is in the have winter. No idea. They'll have to be in front of no audience as well. I mean, I don't know what's going on here. But if this, if this, if he thinks, I mean, if he really thinks that there's going to be this second wave during the cold because the virus will do better in the cold, obviously, um, then see you later. We're in for a mess again this winter. And uh, it'll probably be it'll probably be about as bad as when it, as March and April because what why is because when it really started hitting us the cold was about to, was was ending our cold months were just at the end and just in the forefront of the prime time like February was like super cold obviously so we'll be getting we'll be dealing with this virus in the U S in September or October cold, November, December, January, February, March, April, May. So it won't be until May of next year that it will start to pop away again. So we'll really yeah. spread this thing around in the wintertime if that's the case. That's that's the worry. And, and, you know, they're not exactly social distancing in the arenas either now because, I mean, look at the big fight that broke out. I mean, even if you have two to five people in the ring, you know, obviously it'll be a minimum of three, including the referee. Yep. Then you got camera people around there and, and technicians, the ring announcer, ring crew. Uh, you know, it, it just it keeps going up and up and up. No, nah, there's, there's not going to be FEMA camps coming. I don't think somebody said I don't, that. I don't think so either. Not for this. This is. They did say that the virus in Florida mutated. Yeah. And that now it's more uh, not deadlier, but it's it's easier to get covid at this point if you come across this strand of the virus the spike protein which makes it have the crown which makes it called the coronavirus in the first place is now sturdier and stronger so it doesn't break which allows it to attach to hosts more you know it, it basically makes you more susceptible to get the virus yeah i saw that so it basically so the, became... the proteins attach you know easier without <laughs> breaking down i saw that i was like oh 
it became uh, easier to get it. It just became easier to get it on the yeah, new, on the new exactly. mutant, whatever so, the new and mutation she, is. The, the the main scientist, I, I want to make sure she said like this doesn't prove that people will you know the infection rate will go up. Yeah, but it doesn't disprove it either. Like you know, it, it, so basically, it, it it's possible. It doesn't mean it's happened yet. Yeah, but it's it not. Did mutate, I saw so. some people being like, "Oh my god, it's gotten worse. It's it's tougher now. It's not. It's not any like that." If you read the article, you'll be in the middle of it. and You'll be like, "Oh, you know how the clickbait articles are. It's mutated." Like and yeah. then in the I middle, mean, it it's did, like it did progress further to to become more susceptible to, you know, the human body basically. Mm -hmm. So it it worked its way to become more infectious. But again, it's it's um, it really feels like we talked about this before, at least for the next couple of years or year and a half or whatever. It really feels like, whatever, you might get it, yeah, but if you get it. There's a 99% chance you're going to live through it. So, yeah, where you, you know, you're going to get it, you know. I mean, Ed you heard too, he said that it's running rampant in Beijing. I heard that as well, so I No, mean, okay. We're, we're not away from this yet and now people protesting, the numbers are skyrocketing in areas where there's been protests, and that's kind of my point tonight. You know, we, on Monday night we saw um you know, the, the raw tag champs go ahead and run through the crowd and, you know, mm -hmm. shaking people's hands and hugging and kissing babies kind of idea. You know, they, they were <laughs> a little too touchy feely. Yeah. And then tonight we have this huge, huge, uh, you know, brawl at the end of the MJF Billy match between Jurassic Express, MJF, Wardlow, you know, everybody, you know, all the roster and, you know, the ref crews come out. So that was, <laughs> you know, more people than you probably should have. And then they're having a, uh, a lumberjack match coming up as well so for next week on dynamite they're going to have a huge lumberjack match and we're also going to see obviously sammy guevara will take on matt hardy but yeah i mean um it's going to be wardlow and luchasaurus <laughs> in the first ever aew lumberjack match so that was the one that was planned in march but obviously everything that happened with covid changed their plans so we're still um Someone said, how's mass doing? And we're still going down um, in mass. So, like, this is the chart in mass for just people wondering about my state. Um, there was only 87 cases yesterday or two days ago, and there was 195 yesterday. Yeah, and, and 200 or under, it seems like. Yeah, if you can get under that. And we're getting, I mean, this is a big state. You know, Massachusetts with the city and Boston and everything. I mean, we're, we've dropped way down, you know, since, so I, you know, I expect this could spike up a little bit here or there, but I would think that, you know, we're doing pretty good here. I don't know how to, how you compare this with, uh, like say, I don't know, like California, let's, or Connecticut, where, where you are in Connecticut, it's about, it's same thing. It's going down, 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 it goes up a little bit, but it goes down further afterwards. So it's. You know, down in Connecticut, um, California, it's a mess in California. This is California. Look at the difference in what I just showed you, everybody. Yeah, they're, they're into the 2000s in California. Oh, my God. I mean, aren't they the... This, what the hell are they doing over there? We're talking about 200 a day in Massachusetts now. And in California, they're in the 2000s, 2,500. What are they? What the hell? They're still, they're still trending upward. There's some states that are increasing, and a lot of that's to do with the, you know, protests, riots, looting, oh all that. God, kind of Arkansas is it's going up in Arkansas. It's kind of gone way down though after it went up. Uh, Colorado, it's down. It's very interesting going state to state. Georgia is just riding that middle line of like about 500 people all the time. Um, United States in, in a, as a whole is uh, United States as a whole was trending downward. Now that we're reopening, it's kind of riding the middle now. So that's expected. So someone said there's a second wave. I don't see a second wave overall. I just see that we're opening up a little bit and it's sort of now riding the middle instead of dropping. So make sure you wear your mask. I don't know. Whatever. Look at that face, man. That, so someone told me that was a mask on this girl. I thought it was... I, I didn't think so. I thought it was all face makeup. That was I face thought it makeup. was face makeup as well, but... 
Yeah, I thought it was all face makeup too. Anyway, the, I mean, that I was mean, that, that was too. some of the best face makeup I've ever seen. Like, I mean, I didn't think she was the greatest wrestler in the ring, but you know, people were bringing up Sue Young and all, and Rosemary and all these other people. I think Rosemary's always been great with her makeup, and she really kind of revitalized that whole thing and started it. Rosemary did, but um, you know, Sue Young's great and stuff like that. But but this girl's makeup was was actually kind of like a horror show. Like, I don't know, I didn't get the horror show vibe from some of the other women's wrestlers when they paint their face like it looks dark and eerie like a little bit you know dark and gothic and stuff like that but this chick tonight like that shit was actually kind of terrifying looking like i mean that like yeah, if that came out of my bed job. like it, yeah like if, if rosemary came from under my bed i'd be like ooh yeah let's go and then if like sue young showed up in my room like wearing her makeup i'd be like hey what's up but if that thing swiveled out of my bed and then looked up at me dude i'd be legit creeped out yeah because i don't think it's a mask i think it's all face paint with yeah. blood splattered the it looks like she's got dentures and two eye contact you know lenses and even her chest has makeup too so oh yeah show me the yeah, chest she's, uh, she's vicious looking that's for sure oh my god i will what else we got her. oh a little bit of the bubbly that's it that's Want it. some bubbly look at this stuff oh oh, oh. a little bit of the bubbly that's it there that's... you booked too many white people all the darks kept in the crowd where we can't see them. Oh. You didn't acknowledge this, Joe. Shame on you, you racist prick. Bask in <laughs> Keith Lee's glory for he is a Negro. Jesus Christ. Um, all, elite, all elite whiteies. Thank you for the donation. Um, see, that's obviously a joke, but that's honestly the, the mindset of some people now, too. Oh, well, yeah. They you didn't. Out, AEW, you're just as guilty. AEW cre helped create that mindset. They eat their own, and they will eat their own over there. Um... What do you think about that? What do you think about some of the criticism from some of the people uh, about like, oh, you know, what happened to all the diversity? It's really a lot of white guys. Um, do you really do you? Uh, That's I mean, why they shot themselves in the foot by starting to be so grandstanding. You know, they got on their soapbox and said, you know, not only are we going to be sports based wrestling to attract the diehard of sports fans, but we're also going to go ahead and, and be as diverse as you've ever seen. And then when things don't turn out that way, they have to kind of keep retracting and changing their statements and, you know, further trying to move the goalpost backwards. There's, there's a lot of straw man arguments too from both sides, but it, it's just upsetting that you can't just enjoy things without everything having to be racially or politically motivated. But, you know, they did virtue signal a lot about all the diversity oh. and stuff. Huge and, time, and that was to their own detriment now and I because think, people now are saying, well, you promised us this, 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 and that. Where, Why are you not delivering? Anybody who wonders about that, too, is like, what's going on? Uh, well, it's a classic move by people who virtue signal and use people's race. Um, they use you until they don't need you anymore. Or they they use you, and then they, then they lose you. They, they use you for the virtue signal but they don't actually use you you know what i mean like it's 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 seen time and time again they don't really actually want to use you they just want a virtue signal with you it's like the people you see coming out of the woodwork all over the social media right now like thank god they took aunt jemima like and all these people like and all these things like it's like and they're all virtue signaling it's like shut up you were using her yesterday before you ever cared about this um, see, when I was a kid, by the way, quickly on Aunt Jemima, I mean, not that I care, but I always saw her as, hey, like, I, first of all, until I moved to Boston, I didn't, there was no diversity in New Hampshire where I grew up when I was, until I was about 10, 10 years old. And then I moved into a city and I was around every culture there is. I mean, like, and then I'd be just whatever. I love everybody, man. But as a, as a kid in New Hampshire, there was no, there was like no black people. There was no, not a, anywhere. And when I used to have breakfast, man, you see, if you see like stuff like that made me feel good. I'd be like, oh, Aunt Jemima, you know, that Aunt Jemima would make you think like, oh, you know, oh, wow. Black women are just like white women. You know, they just want to cook for their families and stuff like that. And you look at the picture and you're like, you're like, oh, man, she just she looks like she's a better cook than my mom is. Maybe my mom's trying to learn from her. She looks like she's really good at pancakes. You know, like, that's what I used to think. And you just be like, oh, yeah, we're all this. Like, that, you don't even think about anything. You just think like, oh, Aunt Jemima, that's just great, great at pancakes. Like, oh, just like my mom cooks food for me, this Aunt Jemima must cook. She must be really good at cooking. And not only that, she's really good at making pancakes. And so, like, you just grow up not 
seeing the racism not getting it like you're like oh, i just like i don't i don't fucking care black or white whatever it's all like seems to be the same watch sesame street it's always diverse on sesame street when i was a kid and uh now you find out all this stuff about all oh, whatever and and to me I know that it came from the the weird racist roots or whatever of like what they did when they first made the idea of Aunt Jemima, but I feel like Aunt Jemima grew out of that, like and was like, yeah, well, guess what? We're gonna become this beautiful household name that everybody loves and feels comfortable with. But uh, hey, man, that wasn't enough. People don't like it and think it's still racist because of the original origins. Um, and I, I saw some people say that they didn't even, uh, they didn't have it in their house because they thought it was racist. Some black people said that. Yeah, there's been that. a big outcrying of that. And to me, it was just pancake batter, you know, sadly white privilege. <laughs> you don't have that mindset of yeah, I had an, worrying about. But I mean, it, even though, even though we had an ignorance to what the real story of Aunt Jemima is, it was still positive. Even though I, even though I, I, maybe we don't know the story of like how racist it, it could be or how it started out racist. It's not now. A picture of a of a, a picture of a black woman on your pancakes smiling like 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 here's your pancakes. I mean, who cares? Betty Crocker. There's tons of white people on products. In fact, the white people normally aren't smiling. The white people are usually like Quaker Oats, and they look fucking pissed. They look angry. Um, but so I always, I just always saw it as positive to me. It was just an, it was diversity on my food. Good. Put more diversity on the food labels. Cause like, I, I just like, oh yes, like black people, white people, whatever. We are all the same. And so like, I took it a whole different way. I took it as a positive of like, it helped me see all the diversity in the world. Like, it, like that's how I see it. So that's whatever. So, you know, but then these people are all virtue signaling everywhere. We're going to get rid of this. We're going to get rid of that. Uncle Ben is going away. You know, I don't even, I don't know the story behind Uncle Ben, how racist that is. But pretty soon the, the racists are going to have their way and there's only going to be white people on all the products, <laughs> which is hilarious. You're taking all the black people off the products. You're putting on yeah. only the white people. What are they going to rename be all it? animated characters, you know? We're going to go for more Foghorn Langhorns and Yosemite Sams. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Just what, no guns. What's gonna be what's what's Aunt Jemima gonna turn into? Is it gonna turn into like? They're gonna have to rebrand. I mean, you can't just keep it calling it Aunt Jemima because isn't that? Well, no, the they're whole, yeah, they're gonna get rid of the name and the and the picture. Yeah, so now you have to rebrand, and now you're gonna have to be like formerly Aunt Jemima. So what are they gonna call it? Feed. Oprah, exactly. like or like are they, are they gonna go with like a celebrity like Beyonce's syrup? I mean, if if they're not gonna go with a, with a a black person are they gonna go with a white person will that be racist yeah. then like they replace aunt jemima martin luther king's pancakes martin luther king's pancakes that could be good would that be bad <laughs> yeah. junior i forgot the junior yeah you know that i don't know of a, a right answer that sadly what so, is captain crunch gonna turn into to acknowledge well captain no crunch. <laughs> captain crunch is fine because he's white nobody gives a shit about that so captain crunch is gonna be fine count chocula's pancakes count chocula might be in trouble if he's chocolate colored, I forget. Is he purple or chocolate colored? Is he black? Count Chocula? I think he's chocolate. Fuck, he's done. That's done. Count Chocula's I done. They're going to come for that, too. Done that, he's done. Count fucking Chocula's <laughs> done. Aunt Oprah, says DJ Scandal. I'm going to bring that up. Um, which, by the way, happy birthday, man. Tupac. Yeah, I didn't even know it was the birthday the other day. That's pretty cool. I'm wearing my Tupac shirt right now to Virtue Signal. Boom. Little homies. Um, no, but so it's just weird. I, you know, we don't get it, man. I'm going to tell you, I'll tell you right now. I, I apologize to all the people that are offended by Aunt Jemima. If you really were always in your life offended by Aunt Jemima, but, but especially if there's people who like their parents literally kept Aunt Jemima, Aunt Jemima, Aunt Jemima out of their house, you know? Oh, Twix is a white rabbit. Yeah. So Trix is good. Trix is fine. So you're, I'm telling you, man, you're going to have only you're white, kids. only Pedophiles. white people. Only white people on your on your food. You're gonna have only on, white people on your food. That it's only for children. You can't no adults. Just for kids. Yeah. That's a that's a pedophile in a rabbit suit. I'm telling you right now. Captain Crunch is cool, man. He's fine then. You know. Yeah, but you got to watch out for that. Yo, rabbit. they're gonna turn Captain Crunch. What they're gonna do is they're gonna start start turning the white ones into black and only you know into like positive black ones. So Captain Crunch is gonna become Captain Crunk. So like it's 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 coming soon. It's gonna we're gonna have Captain Crunk, and he's like instead of Captain Crunch with the spoon and the Captain hat, like ah, he's gonna have like a like a Lil Wayne type of look, and then he's gonna be like. <laughs> 
He's going to be like holding the crunk, the cans of crunk that uh, Little Wayne used to sell that I used to sell. I think those are his. Um, the crunk ones, yeah, yeah. But there's a lot of there's a lot of. I don't. I, I, Joe and I obviously get that this is a movement to change society and change the outlook of people, but we just don't know that the answer is turning everyone that's black white and white black. You know, that's that's. I'm a little more concerned with the black people that are being hung all over the country as yeah, opposed that's, to the uh, lynchings are, are more concerning and, and disheartening. Bit more than concerned. Anything. I'm concerned with the lynchings that are happening. Um, less concerned with the serials. But uh, that's just. <laughs> let's go to an unknown call. Uh, unknown call. Hello. Yo, Coronel. What's going on, man? They will not cancel Count Chocula. Ah, ah, <laughs> ah, 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 Are you ah, sure? I mean, I'm me. really, I'm, I'm worried that a, uh, I'm worried that a white guy invented it, and they'll think it's some kind of weird thing. Um, but anyway, listen, I'm ignorant towards it. I don't understand. You know, maybe you do. I, I'm an Irish guy, and I grew up my whole life. Everybody's a goblin or a leprechaun. You know, I mean, like. You know, I, Irish Irish people were slaves. I'm Irish. Everywhere you go, Irish people are like, I'm a dumb midget who fights people or like whatever. Lando Lakes is next as well. You no, Lando we'll Lakes already that. went. They went first. I don't it's care. It's just going to happen again. I love, I, love the, I love the Irish stereotypes. I love them. You're dumb drunk. You're fucking. We, we, we were slaves at one point. Um, we were conquered and slaves. Um, midgets. Drunken things fighting you're just turning me on. What goblins. You. God. You know, whatever. Like I don't know. I just I think it's hilarious, the goblin stuff and all that stuff. But I'll tell you what, the Washington Redskins are gonna go. See you later, Washington. You're done. That's coming. Are They're you coming. having some repressed issues pop out today? Is that what happened? The dentist vomited yeah, you while the, the he, uh, dentist knocked you out. Finger fucked me, dude. It was crazy. Like, dude. Well, dude, I had everything. I went to the dentist and I had everything going against it. I went, into, I went into my dentist, right? He's a wrestling fan. I know the guy. And he's like, after he gets done with everything, he's like, yeah, I don't do root canals anymore. And I'm like, what? Why am I here? He's like, well, you know, we're going to do all these other things to you. But right now I'm going to recommend you to this other guy. I'm like, you got to be fucking kidding me. So I go to the other guy. I look up the other guy. The other guy is a guy who's temporarily here from New York. I'm like, oh. The hotbed Lovely. of the coronavirus. <laughs> yeah. His, uh, Stick your hands in my mouth. His assistant was Chinese. He was from New York. It was a great time. I was like, oh. But they were the sweetest people ever. It was so cool. Like, they were great, man. I'll tell you what. That Chinese dentist, that Chinese uh, nurse or whatever, that assistant, holy hell was she hot. That's the hottest like uh, the dental assistant I've ever worked with. It was crazy. Super distracting. Let me, let me, let me tell you, man. You get the one that leans on you, so their boobs are just on your arm while you're oh trying to uh, drool on yourself. No, she didn't really have any, but she was just like hot. And and then the doctor was kind of hot too. I got to tell you, this guy was kind of hot for a dentist. Like it was weird. Like you know, most dentists, you know, they kind of whatever. My dentist kind of looks like me if I could grow a beard, and he's like fatter, and he's more like jolly. Like yeah, like yeah, he's not actually he's in good shape right now. Um, but I'll tell you, man, because I, I thought about banging him once too, because he kind of got that little orangey look to him a little bit. Um, slap him around, call him uh, my dentist still a couple times. It was great stuff. Um, but uh, something about this guy, man, a little Middle Eastern, uh, you know, from New York, you know, had that little New York accent. You know, it's not not Boston, a little more New York. And that, that kind of was like mm, something something naughty about this. And then the, the Chinese uh, lady was very hot as well. And it was very stimulating while I was sitting there on the Novocaine and drugs, which I'm still on right now, as you can tell by these comments. Um <laughs> And the pain that I've been in, the Percocet is kicking in. Um, but yeah, I thought about, you know, I thought about just saying it out loud, you know, towards the end when he was almost done, just saying, you know what? Um, I, I hate to say this, but would you two change my mind? <laughs> I no, like uh, uh, you two ever banged in here? Like, in front, like, cause I mean, really, cause this should happen. It was wild. It was quite the visit to the dentist. Today. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm Super party. It's amazing. What did you think about the women's match in NXT? Julius Lopez, thanks for the dollar ninety nine, man. We have not seen it yet. I think me and Jake chose to go with AEW tonight. We did not see it. I would love to hear about it, but I would love to watch it. White guys love Asian women. Asian women are kryptonite, says Irish Sky. I like, <laughs> dude. I like all women. I don't. I mean, I, like, I don't like women because I don't go around like sniffing women. I'm, I'm kind of joking. I don't really go around like, look at that girl, look at that girl. I, yeah, I like, you're not I, Tommy. I, 
Yeah, I'm just I'm kind of into my wife to be honest. Like I'm just into Leah. Like I just like like I don't know. I'm just like into I'm just into my wife. I'm not really like running around like a hornball. Like look at this girl. Look at that girl. I'm just more like uh, into my wife. Like when's my wife gonna get dressed up or like look whatever you know. But um yeah, I know every every woman I, I've hooked up with every type of girl. I like them all. I don't care. It didn't matter to me ever. Like Asian, I don't got a thing for Asian. I got a thing for redheaded redheaded pasty women. But I like all the women. I'm telling you, man. There was an Egyptian girl back in my high school, man. This Egyptian girl was from Egypt. She was, holy hell, dude. She would melt your balls where the lips are. Do a little basketball dance off the concrete. Oh. I mean, I'm just so sick of you little meth head devil worshipers. I'll be honest. I'd like to take a big bite out of your face. Crow joining you had me crying Monday night with your Ryback phone sex call. Who would you have be the first AU you wrestler come out the first night Terry's a crowd again to get that first huge pop? Oh, yeah, there's the one where he said, yeah, Orange Cassidy would be big. I think, you know, Orange Cassidy and Cody Rhodes, uh, but you probably Those save Cody. Two I'd go to. Yeah. Maybe would, Jungle Boy, you know. The Jungle Express or whatever. The Poe Boy, thanks for the $10. Uh, yeah, the Ryback sex line call was a hit Monday night. It was at the very end, though, so a lot of people missed it. Didn't hear me call the sex line. Um, it was the naughty line. It was the naughty time. Um, probably my 50th sex call. I looked at the number on the button. <laughs> We've had a lot of calls <laughs> over the years, Poe Boy. Uh, I need to send you a gift card as a thank you at this point. They do? Nightflur? You think so? They they need to. after yeah. you, put, you put somebody's kid through college at this point. Yeah, there was a girl that I called a while back. We I remember we gave some girl was so good a couple of years ago. We like gave somebody donated something, and then I gave her an extra yeah. tip. I gave her a tip, and I was like, "Yeah, this is really funny." I think I sent it to her too. I was like, "Hey, listen to this," and um, it was funny. That's awesome. But that that girl Especially was when hilarious. They play along with whatever, you know, the the better they they act with it. That yeah, the girl Monday was into wrestling, so it was really funny that she was like. Do you want me to be Stephanie McMahon and you can fuck? I'm like, what the fuck? Like, and oh my god, that was so wild that she knew all that stuff. You ridiculous piece of shit. All right, back to the donos we go. One more time, Mr. Poe Boy. Thank you for the ten dollars, bro. Thank you so much, man. Thank you guys for the donos for keeping the show going. Uh, we will indeed take more of them. What did you think about AEW? Let us know right now via Super Chat or the Streamlabs Twitch Alerts donation link below. That's a better place to do it if you can. 614, hello. Hey, Joe. Hey, man, what's up? Hey, I want to talk to Jake. You want to talk to Jake? All right, he's right here. What up, Jake? This is the Bullfrog. There goes that call. <laughs> Jake. I'm not realizing Skype, and I can't. Yeah. Hey, uh, um, I just want to say that you know I'm sorry for whatever. You didn't, if you want to, squ oh, he did. He's not mad. He all oh, he told he said to go fuck yourself, Bullfrog. What did you do to Jake? What did you do to him? I don't know. We used to be friends. Now he doesn't like me uh, no longer. You're right. He. You know what? You you can't hear him because he's on Discord and you're on Skype and it doesn't work. You can only hear me. But he just said to go. To go cut your frog legs off and and then in the middle of the road. Uh, hey, uh, the reason Bad why I'm calling is when you go to call a Jumbo show, man, he uh, he he has mad respect for you, bro. Cool, man. When is he doing one? He does a uh, show almost every morning, man. I'm not awake when he does it. Oh, well, no, that's probably why. <laughs> I sleep. I wake up at like nine, uh, maybe ten a.m. But uh, yeah, I, uh, I, I messaged I mean, him. Uh, he week. talked about you all the time on his morning show. And, like, we, mm. it's like, yeah, it's like he probably uh, uh, this year at sleep or whatever. Does he want to have sex or? No, he just wants you on the show. He admires you. And, you know, he uh, he said he would cry if you call his show. <laughs> well, then I'm God, I feel dumber I'm, already. I'm, de oh. I'm definitely not calling then if someone's going to cry. If I call. <laughs> no. He all right. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow the fuck was that i what the fuck everybody's <laughs> kept pounding it in there jesus christ man the mentally Let's disabled your band, your ass. only the mentally disabled are getting through right now like what is happening a little bit of the bubbly want some bubbly a little bit of the bubbly bubbly 
at work decided to blast this. Hell yeah, baby. Blast it up, Turn Spear and Danny up. Roy. Boom. 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 You know how uh, AEW has those quiet rooms for people with sensitivity and autism and stuff like that? They're also going to be adding stupid rooms for Bullfrog in case someone just fucking is so dumb they might get hurt. Truly ponder how he's still alive. Didn't even know that was him. How he hasn't like taken a bath with a toaster yet. Like I just question that existence. Yeah. He called from some random number too. I don't even know what number that was. He doesn't wake up and stick a fork in an outlet. You know, things like that. Just, just <laughs> it, it baffles my mind. What Apparently, in the world? Drew and I are doing a show with him about wrestling. We oh, left yeah. you, and we're we're jumping, jumping, you know, to to Bullfrog. Dude, the stuff that he DMs, <laughs> like I've had people like who don't even like me that much, DM me and be like, "This crazy guy is saying this stuff," and I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, that guy's whatever." Like so many people DM me, so many people that don't even really want to talk to me, maybe or like I don't even want to talk to, will have DM me and been like, "Dude, I, this guy's fucking crazy." You know what I mean? Except for there's a couple people that believe him, but there's he yeah. says things but and then, then they're just crazy. So which is hilarious. But anyway, uh, AEW. What do you remember? What we gave AEW last week? Because I don't even remember. I think I gave it a seven or a six point five or something. Uh, I'm, I don't recall, but I'm definitely oh, yeah. on a 7.5 this week. I really enjoyed this show. I'm think, high on this episode. Somebody tell me what I gave last week. I don't remember. I would say that I, I liked last week better than this week, but by not by like 0.5. It was cool to see two new additions to the women's roster. I liked the opening tag match. I really liked MJF and Billy. Mm-hmm. I mean, I get it was a pretty straightforward match, but I, I, everything MJF does to me is gold so far. So I, I really enjoyed that. And the fact that he had to cheat to win, even though did he absolutely need to, we're not sure. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's interesting. Um, the fight that broke out afterwards was, you know, cool to see Cody with his open challenge. He made a good promo. So did Arn. Uh, was pretty open and honest. He's like, I don't even know if the Nightmare family is a family anymore. I don't even know if I'm still part of the elite. You know, I, I don't know what's up, but I know that I'm here to defend the title. And Ricky Starks, uh, certainly that was a hell of a match between those two. Very entertaining. And they really let Starks get in a lot of solid, you know, offense too. It, he wasn't a, a slump that was easy to beat. So they, you know, really good debut for him. The Young Bucks and Super Bad Squad. You know, Jimmy Jacobs and Kip Sabian. Again, I wasn't crazy about that match, but the team-driven melter driver, whatever the hell you want to call that <laughs> moment, about, that was really interesting. And then we saw FTR, which somebody in the chat said before, always makes me think of, and I agree, formerly the Revival. You know, that's what I'm going with. Right. Um, with them intervening and, and Butcher and the Blade being there. Butcher and the Blade wearing questionable outfits as well but <laughs> yeah and, and butch, butch I don't, butcher had glasses on i thought yeah. that was the funniest thing he's in the middle of a fight he's still got he's got glasses on <laughs> so seeing them come out and all turn <laughs> shit that was uh entertaining and then obviously we got more from kaz uh taz uh, jesus i was gonna say cage and taz so kaz, well, the ftr kaz. isn't one of them like spaz or something i can't get their names right right now either yeah, that's not happening for me at this point. Yeah, so. <laughs> I got I got to like sit down and look at them and be like, this and that, this and that. I don't even. Yeah, I can't. Your Wheeler, your Cash. Uh, oh yeah, Cash right. and something. They should have gone with like Caden Cash or something like that. Something that was like more, you know, Caden Cash or something like that. Bradley and Biff or like just like a couple names that like sort of rhyme together. They they would stick quicker. I can't remember a damn thing. I think was so one one is really cash. I don't remember. I I think so. I couldn't even tell you right now. I, See, no, 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 no. <laughs> but um, the fans you know, now the we chat found know. out the listeners in the chat know more than we do. They do indeed. Uh, now we also know that Brody Lee is going to be taking on Colt Cabana, Sonny Kiss, and Joey Janela. Um, you know, that, that's going to be a hell of a match. Wardlow is going to face Luchasaurus. And then FTR is taking on the Natural Nightmares. So, I mean, it's... It, and then John Moxley is going to be on commentary the entire night. So that's, you know, going to be fun. We'll see you, it, which Ambrose we get. <laughs> do we get Moxley or do we get Dean? We'll find out. But 
I am I am intrigued to say the least. And that's the thing that WWE does not have that AEW does, and I can say that with a straight face. A reason to tune in next week. And I know they can say like, oh, it's just this match. It does it doesn't it's not always just the matches either, though that helps. But there's <laughs> continuations and stories that I'm curious with. I want to know what's going on with the Dark Order going forward. I want to see it does Britt Baker try and get revenge in some way, shape, or form? How does this uh, you know, feud play out Do, does anything happen to mjf with what he did to billy you know does he end up facing his son we'll, we'll see what happens but and then best friends had a really good match against jericho and sammy guevara i still like guevara coming out singing jericho's theme that is something that just hasn't died for me yet i enjoyed the hell out of that um they you know they, they he had toned a really it good down a little bit too i like that he kind of did it a little bit but he toned it down a little bit if he was still doing the whole yeah thing, yeah like, he's oh. still doing it but he's not as screechy yeah, it would be like annoying at, at some point. They'd be like, oh, no, stop. And then it was funny because Sammy got hung up by the cameraman who ended up being Orange Cassidy. And then that's when Trent puts Guevara away with the Dude Buster and we get a solid victory. It's about a 16-minute match, which all leads to Orange Cassidy revealing himself to be the cameraman. And the makeup they gave him to look like he had you know, black eyes that are healing and the big Band-Aid, it really showed that he took a hell of a beating. He was still moving a little bit stiff and selling the beating he took from Jericho and you know, his, his cronies. So it worked out quite well. And it makes Orange Cassidy and Best Friends that much more popular and over with the fans. So really, really fun show to watch. It went by really quick tonight. I'll say that as well. Yeah. Nothing I watched felt like a slog to get through. Usually with Raw, you get to hour two, like we said the other day, and then it just hit the brakes, and it was such a drag. This, just beat after beat. And if there's something you don't care for, you get right into something else. Yeah, it's something you don't care for only lasts about five to ten minutes. So, we're, And it's something interesting comes along eventually. Oh, yeah, let me just pee in this bottle right here. Oh. Just let it all out. Oh my God! I'm, it's like I was I'm, wondering if they, if they gave you anything uh, for pain. Well, at least they give you Percocet. That helps because the they, they nothing actually, worse than oral. They actually didn't. I don't have. Oh anything. no, no. I, but I am. I was like, I, this is the most painful <laughs> post. Uh, like, so basically, the guy decided, like, all right, we got to clean that. You know, we can't pull it today because of how the infection is or whatever. And he was like, so you'd have to whatever anyway. And he's like, you're not in like super pain regularly, right? You're only in the, like. You're only in like mega pain when you're drinking something and it touches it. I'm like, yeah, it's really bad though. And he goes, okay, well, that's not good, but we need at least three days for this to clear up. So he's going to clean it. So he cleaned it out. Then he stuck a filling in it. And he's like, I'll do the filling for like nothing. I'll just stick the filling in it. Then you can think about if you want it. If you want, all I have to do is finish finish it off with the root canal thing. It'd be really quickly and easy. And uh, or you can pull the tooth, whatever. But at least you'll be able to eat for the next three to five days while you try to get that infection out of there and come back, and we'll figure out what to do. And I'm like, all right. So he basically stuck a thing. Uh, but but it was like, what he did. I don't know. When I when it, when it wore off, I was like, oh my god, like this is the fucking worst. And it's mostly probably from the needle, the the seven, because like this guy jammed me like boom, 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 and then and then just started to work. When I was in his office, he goes boom, boom, boom. And then he goes, all right, V. I'm like, whoa, like you got to wait for the Novocaine to start working. What the fuck is going on? And so it hurt. And he goes, oh, that hurt? I'm like, yeah. So then he's like, boom, 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 bam. And and then like now it's good. It's all good. Usually the nerve is exposed. It, it hits yeah. in almost instant. So. Yeah, I was like, oh, my God, dude, I'm going to need more than that. Like, what the fuck? The goddamn thing is out. But that was, but my doctor never would have done that. My dentist would have been like, all right, you ready? Boom, 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 boom. Feeling good? Numb? All right, we're going to start, you know? And he would wait. He would, But he would wait. He'd be like, all right, let's let that Novocaine do its job. Ten, I'll be back in yeah, like five, ten minutes. Or, give you a bit of time. This guy was just like, boom, boom, boom. All right, let's start. And I'm like, ah! And he's like, all right, that hurt. Boom, 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 boom. And then he goes, all right, let's start. And he was clearly in a rush because, like, whatever. But I was like, Jesus Christ, bro. My, like, fucking root, you can see it. Um, so now you'll go back in three days. So I'm going to go back. i got to go back and figure out what to do. Um I asked the doctor, I said, why did you pull my wife's tooth? But, you know, you didn't, you don't want to pull my tooth, but you pulled my wife's tooth. And he goes, well, and, and he gave me some answer. And she was like, I don't remember. He tried to get me to save mine too. And I'm like, I think he's just fucking, they all, they all just make money. All the, all they the want dentists. you to save it because obviously they make so much more, you know, yeah, they make a bunch of money. But it also depends on how damaged it is and how 
bad the infection, decay, yeah. all of that, you know, he was is like, as well. He was like, oh, it's a, it's pretty infected, but it's like, um, he was saying that her tooth was more like fucked, like de like de like it was pretty dead, like the whole thing, and he was like, it was not worth it. So I didn't mind, just pull it. Um, yeah, but, when but, I had a hole in my sinus when I had mine because mine was impacted all the way up, and when it broke, it like never the tooth basically exploded. So I've um I I've had um I have not had eight root canals. I don't know why that guy says that. I have eight. Can I've had uh, three root canals. Three. I've had three root canals. And I've got a shitload of fillings. And today the dentist was like, you you got the teeth of like a 58-year-old. No, oh, I'm sure. These yeah, ones are all it's... good, though. The front, everything, everything that you guys can see, are these are all good. There's a tiny cavity on one of the canines, he said, like this tiny little surface cavity. He's like, it's the littlest thing ever. He's like, it's not going to be a big deal at all. It's the stupidest thing. But uh, everything is good, except the top molar here, top molar there tooth in front of the molar there and there was a bottom one that was done like 15 years ago that i, I don't know that's it yeah that's well, what sucks you know. about not growing up with dental you know well <laughs> niles said uh, i was in the hospital for a week from a tooth infection it's nothing to you know mess with yeah and that's the truth infections no matter where they are especially being in your head that that can turn you septic so quickly because it gets mm. into everything you're swallowing the pus and it's mm. it's a nightmare yeah, dude, it's dude. Fuck that. Like, I in fact, I I gotta take my uh, antibiotics again. Um, yeah, real YT says my dentist gives two kinds of sleepy medicine and then waits for about a half an hour. That's if they're gonna take it out and they hopefully they will anesthetize you that way. They just put you under twilight and then you just wake up and it's gone. It's already out. Easy damn. enough. Leah said they just fucking numbed her up and boom, they popped it out and she was out of there. I've had it multiple ways. I've been out all the way unconscious with IV medication and then I've had just gas and then I've had just Novocaine. So huh. when they were trying with the IV stuff, they couldn't knock me out. They were, they were dying laughing because they kept trying with it, you know, and it just, I have such a tolerance and I'm such a big ass to begin with. Huh. They could not knock me out for nothing. They're like, how are you still talking? They had people come in. They couldn't believe it. They're like, you got to come here for a second. Look at all this shit we gave him and he's still talking. <laughs> well, Leah's got that redhead DNA. I feel like that where she's like less, she doesn't feel pain as much as other people, which is a true yeah, thing. Yeah, less susceptible to. Yeah, like I feel super pain. Like so, when Leah's like, "Oh, that's not. It wasn't a big deal." I'm like, "Yeah, well, you got like that fucking Neanderthal fucking shit in you, or whatever the hell, with her red hair." And I'm like, "So you're probably like fucking like, who cares?" Um, but anyway, um, was there anything we missed on AEW? I mean, did we get? Oh, there was. Yeah, we got. That was all. It that was. That was the show. Good, good show, man. I was. Yeah, I'd probably go a seven or a six point five or something like that for me. I thought it was really good. Maybe seven. I'll give it a seven. I can't give it. Yeah, I'm, I'm at seven point five. Like I said, I am curious to see if they follow WWE's plan because phase two for WWE, they're in phase one now. Right. Phase two, they're going to wean out the NXT recruits in the audience and just have those friends and family members that are there. And then they're going to allow select fans to return and fill in the performance center, keep it at about 50%. Phase three is 100% live fan audience. They're shooting at 50% capacity now. And the hope is that shows will uh, show fans at home that, hey, things are returning to normal. And then they said phase four is where they go back on the road so they can do TV and pay-per-view. They're not going to be doing house shows anytime soon but they are looking to do at least the pay-per-views and and they're aiming for raw smackdown as well nxt could be just relegated to the performance center and stay that way right okay Since usually they stay put anyways with full sale but i wonder if that's how aew is going to you know fall as well especially since are they going to try and keep them there now because of all the issues with the orlando's international airport as we mentioned We'll see. It's it. I mean, there's just a lot to consider, but um, hmm. yeah, we'll see if they do. I mean, it's it's it really is interesting to watch how everybody reacts to this and how things are going. You know, not that Fauci knows a damn like what you know if anybody really believes him, but it's funny to watch the NFL get geared up like here comes the NFL, here comes the NBA, and all this stuff. And meanwhile, Fauci's like, oh, you better wrap it up, baseball. Like, what? yeah. And and baseball is outside, so I mean the NBA is inside. I mean, like you would think you would get less less chance of passing on COVID outside amongst people at a baseball game 
than in a stadium or something. So, like, I don't know. Like, it's just weird. Like, what are they going to do? So, if you're the six feet rule is when people are with a mask, you know, essentially yeah. that's how that if it's without a mask, you're supposed to be a little bit further. And then if people are yelling or talking or being loud, exerting oxygen and droplets, you're supposed to be even further away from each other. And you've got people yelling in the crowd, cheering. And WWE is saying that, oh, to wear a mask means you're not a fan of WWE. So they don't want anybody well, wearing it, masks. Didn't they say Kevin Dunn said that? Like, Yeah, they said Kevin fan? Dunn. Had, allegedly, he was the one to say that. But yeah, who knows? With the... I can picture him saying something like that. But Well, I can picture him sucking a dick. Well, <laughs> we've all seen that video, him and Vince, you know? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I he guarantee. gets on his knees. Real quick. It's amazing. Time Down on your goddamn knees, but At least Fauci. we have something to look forward to, because with all of Raw, can you think of anything that, that they left us on that's a hook? Christian Christian got taken out on a stretcher, so you know he's not going to be there for a little while. I feel like everything with Drew and Bobby Lashley is is could be built up again, but he lost, so there's not a ton of intrigue there. And... That's kind of it at this point in time for the Raw show. I can't really think of it. Seth Rollins, what he's going to do, but it, his isn't like must-see. He's the must-see of the show, but if I didn't see it this week and I just heard the recap, I don't feel like I have to tune into Raw. As we're AEW, I, you know, there's a lot to look forward to, and I feel like tonight was a bit of an important episode to watch. So, Yeah. Yeah, I think, usually I'm not rushing about AEW, but I was just I I really enjoyed tonight. I think I you know especially after dealing with WWE's pay per views. I'm a little messed up today too. So that's bad. I'm a little messed up today too. So I'm watching like in pain, like uh, but I still like it. So it's like, dude, that's but this is what happens, man. At the end of every single week, I look forward to Wednesdays. I look forward to Wednesdays over everything. It's too bad it's in the middle, and it's too bad you know NXT isn't like Thursday. Although then every day would be wrestling, but you know. SmackDown is like an afterthought. I think I'm going to, I might start trying to do a SmackDown review again too, by the way, for people who have been asking. Um, I may start to do either a reaction to SmackDown and then just be like, all right, we're done. I'm out. Or doing a, you know, quick review live, like 30 minutes and then I'm out. And then because monetize this starts and it's just usually more important. But um, yeah, so I, I'll try to do that. Let's go back to the donations though. What are you guys saying? I would love to hear what you guys say about this shit tonight. I, because I just got a basically a plain outlook on it of uh, like I thought it was really good. I thought it was pretty pretty good, pretty good show tonight. And uh, like Jake said, it moved quick. It, the pace was great. So like there was never a oh my god. Like the weird thing is this was the type of show where they could have had another. Th they could have had a third hour, and it would never have felt like the raw. Raw well, building felt towards Fighter Fest nicely too with everything yeah. they did tonight. They're progressing and, and adding to the. They even added another title match. So, I mean, it, it's it's getting... Now we know that Sheeta is going to be taking on... Uh, who was it? Penelope Ford, right? Uh-huh. Yeah, so that'll be a good match. At least it's not Nyla Rose again. So. Oh, my God. I wonder, I wonder <laughs> what's going to happen with some of those failed debacles. What they're going to do. Because they really made them like... Trim this the fat, hopefully. Literally well, and, and figuratively. They really there. pushed some of these people as like the face, <laughs> like of the like one of the brand and stuff like and it really didn't work out. Super right. Jack. Super Jack. Smiley face. Mauro said women's tag division besting WWE. Smiley face. Oh yeah. I mean the women's tag division is the best in the WWE. Do a little basketball dance off the concrete. <laughs> I mean, I'm just so sick of you little Our meth head world. devil worshippers. I'll be honest, I'd like to take a big bite out of your face. Go ahead and do it. In other news outside of wrestling, some Atlanta police officers are not responding to calls. Lots of the force has walked off the job. This country has set a precedent for police. It's not a good one. James Mesner, thank you for the $10 donation. It's a bad precedent right now because, like I said, I feel bad for both sides. There was that police officer, I don't know if you saw, she was basically... Not crying, but, but being very upset, visibly shaken, because she was ordering food at a McDonald's. She got uh, up to the window. She had mobile paid, so her, her meal should have been ready. Right. And when she got there, they're like, oh, it's not, so you got to pull up. Then they brought out just the drink after she was waiting for a very long time. 
and you know obviously she's in uniform in her squad car so they know she's a police officer so she told them you know what it's already paid for don't worry about the food i can't take it because i don't know unless you know somebody could have messed with it and she was just very visibly shaken and upset and she's like it's been so stressful i've i've worked for the force for 15 years i've been a police officer and and this is the worst time for all of us so if you see a police officer say thank you you know there's still a lot of us that do care and do our jobs and you could tell that she was just visibly distressed and she she was saying how she was looking forward to some time off that was coming up and people dragged her calling her Karen and, and tore her a new one, you know, just, I, I get some of the, the valid criticism, you know, like here you have black people not wanting to die on their way home from work to police officers and you're crying about an egg McMuffin. I right. get it, but it's more than that. It's deeper than that. It's both sides. We want to see, you know, Black Lives Matters and the, the Thin Blue Line work in cohesion. We want to see everybody. Did you see last night on Throwdown that we, we I, I didn't know this. Yeah, you guys went step by step through. Did whole, you see that you know, the the guy who was killed at the Wendy's? He was wearing a, a cop's. Yeah, he had the Thin Blue Line hat that you pointed what out. What was that about? He was wearing a cop's live matter hat. Yeah, that's I weird. Mean, and now that cop is being charged with felony murder. So right. Oh, now and I, I he's going to sue the department because he was trained to do that. Yeah, I mean, we were discussing this the other day, but it all comes to how they're trained. When you when you are in that situation, as soon as you pull out your gun, you have to be willing to kill somebody. Wait, that's if what they somebody train. fires a taser at you, that can debilitate you. If you get hit with the taser, you become incapacitated. If you get hit by that taser, you're incapacitated. So that is a threat to your life. So yeah, cops because then they will, can grab your gun and, and take you out, and he wasn't I'm, that far away. I'm saying, like, listen, if I'm a cop and I can make my own rules up, I'm walking that guy home or driving him home. I'm be like, hey, hey, man, listen, I think you've had too much to drink, so I'm not gonna arrest you. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna write you a ticket, you know, whatever. Tow your car, probably whatever that type of deal is. But uh, why don't I give you a ride home? You know, why don't we just drive you? I'll drive you the home. The problem is you had the best intentions, and that second officer wasn't an asshole. It didn't seem like he was rude. He literally just said, hey, we're, we're going to put you under arrest. You know, well, you, they did all what they were trained to do. My, my point is they did what they were trained to do. So the, so yeah, the, they, so the, they co put the hand commissioner, on them, and then he started fighting them. So, so how about don't fight the cops? Don't get shot. So I am going to sue, if I'm that cop, I'm going to sue the commissioner. I'm going to sue the state. I'm going to sue everybody because... They trained you to do that. He will prove, you'll see it. He will prove that they trained him to do that. And he did it. And now they're calling him a murderer. So he is going to sue the shit out of that police department. Um, and they're trying to say the second cop needs to be brought up on murder charges. What the fuck did the second cop do? Well, now they're saying that he's, so long as he just continues to, uh, you know, contribute towards their case, he won't get charged, but. But it doesn't matter because, like... I don't see how... Yeah, I mean, but that's the thing I was speaking at on some point where if you get officers that are trigger-happy or are violent, you know, do they have a thing where every officer needs to ride with a partner and anything you do, your partner's uh, culpable for as well? You know, yeah. let's say if you shoot at somebody, then we're both going to jail for life if it's not a cleared shooting and justified because I could have stopped you, you know? That's what they're trying to... They're trying to make people accountable, and I, I get it in one sense, but that's that's not the answer either. It really is like, you know, foot rub said, what a fucking mess. It's like, listen, bro, like the George Floyd one, that's fucking crazy. That cop. Yeah, that's a, awful. That, that cop's a murder. That happened. And those other three cops should have, you know, forcibly taken him off of Floyd and said, he cannot breathe. This is going on too far. He's They're not all rookies. resisting. He's hurting detained he's in handcuffs what what are you trying to get at what are you trying to prove they were all dumb rookies is the problem they didn't they're like oh this is what we do i guess like it's like but they shouldn't be there um but yeah that obviously that guy's a murderer that's terrible but the atlanta one i mean are you kidding me these guys are trained to do this so yeah. when when you fire them mass, fire they, multiple times this, don't stop to your targets now cops being called a racist cop got fired by the department cop is now being charged for murder that cop is going to win a lawsuit i'm i unless some kind of thing happened that i don't know about or crooked thing happens that's why cops are walking off the job because they look at that and they go well what the hell i'm trained to do that like i am trained to do that so the people that should be murderers the people that should be in trouble are the police departments who train these people to do that because it's like it's like if I'm given the right to to defend myself, and if so, if somebody shoots, if somebody fights you and steals your taser and shoots it at you, you have the right to shoot them and kill them. 
That's, yeah, I that's, don't want to see that guy die either. I would have loved to have seen this been resolved any other yeah. way. If I was the cop, said, well, tell his poor kids it's okay. It's not okay. None of this is okay. But uh, you also shouldn't, whether the police are right or in the wrong, they still have a sense of power and authority. So do as they say. And most times, if you listen and comply, there's not going to be a problem, white or black. And, and that's, but but there's bad cops. There are tons of bad cops, and there's bad training, and both need to be addressed. Absolutely so, because you add. You know those bad apples with the with racism and and yeah the it cop just turns violent. The the guy we built we broke this all down yesterday, so I don't want to do it again. But yeah, the guy know, the guy you was know, hoping he know. was going to get let go, and then the cop kind of like got like rushed the arrest. Like, well, you get arrested, and it was kind of like weird, and it, he made it all awkward. If I was a cop, I would be so much better than that guy. Like, it would be so much. <laughs> Like it would just never would have gotten to that point because I'm better at talking to people. That guy doesn't, and they talked pretty well. But like at the end, the, they rushed that handcuffing. You know the way they did it. But you never think someone's gonna like fight you and then run like the guy steal the taser. I don't know. But the bottom line is the Floyd death is horrific, and that I'm angry about. This one, yeah. Is, that I, one's I mean, I'm tragic. mad the guys. That guy should not have died. Like if I'm the cop, I shoot the guy in the leg if I can. I'm aiming for the leg. I'm not gonna go boom, boom, boom in the chest. I'm going yeah, to be that's like, what they need to train and allow these officers treat, to do to, to you know, incapacitate and, and you know, why can't de escalate you should situations. be good at shooting a guy but in the instead, leg? They're trained to shoot center mass, fire until they're down, and you know, basically don't stop firing. That's why they yeah. fire so many shots. People are like, Why did you fire 19 shots? Because between two of them, they're firing eight times a piece. You know, that's the problem. Yeah, it's like, What the hell? How many bullets do you need? I mean, the guy shot the taser, which is bad, that's dangerous, and he should, you know. But um, he missed, so you're like, all right, so you go boom. You know, you go boom, maybe you go boom, boom in the legs. But, like, you know, that's that's me. You know, you may be a cop out there, and you're like, Joe, you're crazy. Um, but that's me, man. You already you already patted him down. You, he doesn't have anything on him. So yeah, because there's so many, you know, there's so many what-ifs to that situation. All right, so then he tases the officer and runs at him, grabs his gun, and shoots him, you know. Uh, he he. Gets one officer tased, then runs away, and now he's gone. They can't find him. You know. Yeah. Did you hear I, the guy I got released? Did you hear that the guy got released for, for because of COVID, and he actually beat his kids? I mean, I heard that he had no, an assault. I haven't heard a ton about this. I I just watched what you guys presented last night. So. Yeah. Well, listen. America loves people who, who gives a shit about my opinion, anyways. But America that, that loves is the people. Training, you know, that's the thing. America want, loves people that beat kids, drunk drive, shoot at cops. Apparently, who cares? Like, I mean, I'm I'm really I'm really done with all of it. I think all the people in this country are nuts at this point. I well, think I everybody's we'll, lost we'll get their minds. Donation to pop up too in a minute. But what about uh, Hyde from that '70s show, Daniel Masterson? Yeah, did you hear about him? Yep, he three. was charged with forcibly raping three women now, throughout the course of 2001. These have been going on. This has been going on for years with him, though. They already canceled the uh, show. Uh, he was on three years ago because of this. Yeah, because of and now, but he's saying these are grave injustices. It's not true, and uh, the statute of limitations for the crime alleged should have, you know, there's there's insufficient evidence, and so uh, heard, yeah. Los Angeles County District's office declined to file sexual assault charges against Masterson in two other cases because statute of limitations and insufficient evidence. So he faces a maximum sentence possible of forty five years to life in state prison. How are they charging him now then? Because if it's past because they have new cases that came out. These are different cases oh. and new evidence. So, okay, they're saying all this occurred at his home at, at the time throughout those years. So, uh, the original case was a judge refuses to dump charges against you know they were they were drugging and raping women. You know the same thing kind of falls in line. So. The media right now is trying to get everybody to kill each other. Just so you know. It seems that way. For the people that don't understand what's going on, the dumb people out there, the media is creating articles so you'll be angry and like you'll want to hurt people or something. I don't know why. The media wants you to kill people. The media wants people killing each other. That's what the media wants. Um, you know, when, when, when a guy pulls a gun on the cops the other day, like Joe Rogan said on his podcast, and, and like fires at the cops and then they fire back and kill him. Um, they call it Hispanic man gunned down by police. Hispanic man gunned down by police. Yeah, Actually, rather I, than saying that he shot at police. And, he started a gunfight and they shot back and they ended up killing him. Like he, like it should have been like suspect in a gunfight dies with police. 
it's like that's what they're doing because they want you to be mad they want you to be angry like it's 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 so weird man they they if um you remember the remember when the black cop punched that lady in the face for the white cop yes if the white cop had punched her it would have been called white cop knocks out black woman yeah assaults black woman it's it's so it, for it, life, it's so you know? easy to see <laughs> They want a race war for some reason. Well, that's because that gets them clicks and ratings. And look at how much they did for ratings. The, the, the views went up tremendously uh, for all the rioting that was going on. People were, were glued to their television sets because it's you know something they want to see the results of. Well, is there any other wrestling news that we can talk about besides the world ending of all the news that's happening? Uh, we should go the donations. Probably. I have little bits here and there, but nothing else about AEW tonight. All right. Well, AEW is good, man. We're going to check out uh, NXT, baby. NXT. Look at that. Yeah, she looks NXT like Danny Phil. Some big matchups for next week. So, I mean, we're, we're going to well, see. I'm going to have to watch. Maybe I can get both on next week. Maybe I can get Super both Jay. on. Uh, Super Jay. Jay. Captain Crunch was a Confederate captain. Was he really? I don't think so, but <laughs> Dorian Moore, thanks for the donation. I'll be so angry because I really love Captain Crunch. Don't fuck with my Captain Crunch. I don't give a fuck hey, what Captain Crunch did. Sister. I love that cereal. I will fuck you up. Um Dre Triple Dre Triple Crown. What's up, Dre Triple Crown? Thank you for the donation, man. And pour him a beer, man. Pour him You're a trying beer, baby. To combat um obviously fighter fest because fighter fest is going to be taped the first and second but it's going to air july 1st oh, and july 8th. a little bit of the bubbly oh. that's it that's it. bubbly look at this stuff oh oh a little bit of the bubbly that's it oh so the fae gets and queers one fruit loops taken down is like tommy being created from a common cum shot in his mom's hairy stank <laughs> pussy aj adams of the three dollars what's up aj adams do they really want fruity uh pebbles <laughs> taking their fruity loops down they really do they're not called. Know, they're not called but... fruitcake loops. They're called fruity <laughs> loops, right? I can picture somebody being upset with that, though. I'd re see. I, I'd go the other How way. I'd be, I'd be like, you know what, bro? You want to take away fruit loops? We're gonna call it fruitcake loops now. We're gonna make it even worse. You know. Super chat party. By the way, happy Gay Pride Month, to everybody. Au six tenths. Keep the good work, Joe and Jake. Steve Kalan, man, thank you so much for the two dollars, man. I, dude, I, if they, I, I wish they made a cereal that was called like butt pumping, and it was just a big rainbow, and then like, then like when a you chocolate. poured the milk on, it made a little orgasm noise. Yeah, and it was like a chocolate. It was a very sexual cereal. Snap, crackle, pop. This every time you pour a little milk on, it just goes ooh. Yes, yes, and twenty percent of yeah. the pro proceeds go to the LGBTQ. <laughs> Um, I would buy that cereal, like dead serious, and support it. Because listen, I'm That'd no, all over that. I don't like the virtue signaling. I don't like the crybaby mentality. But uh, I still support you guys. Happy Pride Month to all my gay friends out there. I hope you suck fucking oh, I fondly. Had cereal in forever. Cereal, the that's my favorite. If I had to choose anything to die off of, you know, you just cereal. sit in the room and eat, that'd be it. Cereal. Captain Crunch. So, Nebit. Oh. Nebit the Jew. Woo. Nine bucks for a fuck. Someone donated nine. I'm getting hard. I got nine inches inside of your wife. Nine bucks, I'm shooting my semen to the ceiling, I'm coming, and my balls have to blue. Nine bucks, suck my dick. It's inside of me, and you can suck it. Aunt Jemima is going to be replaced by Aunt Karen. Instead of buttery rich syrup, it's going to be called bittery bitch syrup. It's coming, <laughs> watch, then they are going to kill us next. Oh my god, Nebit the Jew, they're coming for you next. Super chat party! They're gonna take away all the Seinfeld stereotypes. Glad him back from now, COVID-free New Zealand. 100. Mike Stinson, what's up, dude? Wow. You had COVID too? Wow. It's crazy. New Zealand, he's okay. Dude, that's really rare too for you to have it because not a lot of people in New Zealand have it, right? That's like a small percentage. So you're, you're one out of a... I think a small group right in New Zealand, I believe. So congratulations, man. Glad you're all right. And I hope you, if you got it, then good, because if you get it and survive it without much of an issue, uh, that's, that's, I think that, I think it's good for you because you build up an immunity to it. Right. So now your body knows. So some mutated supposedly. version, <laughs> supposedly, yeah, we don't know, 
But like it we've could, also heard some people getting infected twice over, but nothing's been verified, and yeah, God knows how true that is. But we'll see. Hopefully, it's a uh, one and done, like the chicken pox. You know, right? Yeah, it's like um, years ago when all those people got infected years later with something, and then they all died. All the kids died because they never had it, but the old people survived. That was the plague we talked about a hundred years ago, the Spanish flu, right? So that's. What I'm thinking, like, you know what I mean? This thing mutates in five years and starts destroying people. It's like... Well, supposedly it already has, like we said earlier. So we'll see if that affects anybody as well. If that makes numbers go up. I got to believe if you get it and you beat it pretty quickly, it's a good thing for you. That either your body, like, if we get something similar, is going to be like, yeah, I got this. And may maybe that's what it is, too. Maybe it's, maybe a lot of people have gotten the other versions of it before. And I don't know, but there's, I don't think there's ever been anything like this one, really. I mean, I guess there has, right? Because it's the part two of whatever the fuck. I don't know. We don't know what we're talking about. Super Jack. Super Jack. You hear about the guy from that 70s show. Oh, there it is. Yeah, see, he'd been accused for years. So, like, all the every year or two years, he would pop up in the news again, and it would be another thing. And they canceled his show about, or they canceled him from being on his show three years man. ago. Here we go. About but to now get he's it, fucked. Here we go. Here we go. Now it's going to oh, get real. Oh, oh. Whatever no. reason. Love you guys didn't watch tonight. Yo, Drew Bar 100. What's up, Drew Bar? Thank you for the. Fa thanks, man, for stopping by and tipping me anyway. Yeah. Appreciate that. True Let's badass stuff, there. Stuff it up, uh, Jake's bum. Um, so next week in NXT, they're trying to come. Uh, excuse me, July 1st, NXT. They're, or no, next week. Yeah, they're trying to combat uh, Fighter Fest. In a, you know, they're going to have a huge triple threat match. So it's Gargano, Keith Lee, and Finn Balor. Whoever wins that match for the North American title on July 8th, which is part two of Fighter Fest for AEW, uh, NXT is going to have a winner-take-all match against Adam Cole. So whoever wins Ooh. is going to be the NXT and North American champion. Really? Yeah, so that's huge. So it's either going to be Adam Cole versus Gargano, Keith Lee, or Finn Balor on July 8th. One of those three. I hope it's Balor. Um... I'd like to see Balor take both titles. God, going man, a big Ballard, run, I gotta tell you, man, Balor is still boring me. Like, I don't know, I can't. Get I know you're it. you're not a a big fan, but I mean, any of those choices I think is ideal. All three of those guys are fantastic storytellers in the ring. So, I feel like we've already seen what Gargano and Adam Cole can do, though. They faced off with each other enough. Keith Lee would be an interesting choice, although we saw some of their matchups. I think Finn is the freshest face for Adam Cole. Costanza, when did you donate? I didn't see it come in. I've never seen it come in. It's Costanza. Let me know, man. Uh, Adam Cole to your mom's house confirmed. Still watching uh, AW. That'll be, be a huge match. Um, like we said, we didn't see it tonight, but we'll try and next week catch NXT with that huge triple threat. And uh, I get my NXT news usually with Spaz. He he has a you know good eye on the prize for NXT. We're also going to see Bronson Reed take on Karrion Cross. And Damian Priest take on uh, Cameron Grimes. So it's going to be a huge, huge week next week for NXT. Tonight we had two tag matches, so I'm still waiting to see, you know, how that worked out. We had the women's tag match and the men's tag titles. So. What is the, uh, so wait a minute, what's the main event of NXT next week? He's, that's It's going to be the triple threat. Keith Lee is defending his title against Gargano and Finn Balor. And then whoever wins that match and becomes or, you know, is the North American title uh, holder is going to take on Adam Cole July 8th. And whoever wins that match will be both the North American and NXT champion. So wow. all for one, one for all. That's pretty cool. Uh, Christian is still not... Cleared Christian. or declared cleared to wrestle. So a lot of people said they cannot stress that enough that he was able to take uh, a few moves, but he's not cleared for a full match. And uh, it says another one of Vince's go-tos is leaking information. The Christian information was leaked early in the day, and almost everybody had it, which we did. We heard that early on before yeah. Raw. I know Adam Ant and a few others brought that up early in the day. In the hours preceding Raw, almost every wrestling journalist was talking about Christian, and they weren't being subtle about it at all. I'm confident that information was meant to get out to the rate to get the ratings going. And by the look of it, it paid off. So Raw went up from 1.737 to 1.94 million viewers. So they went up about 200,000. So can't beat that all in all, considering. Yeah, that's not bad. 
They, I mean, I don't know. I, I feel like the ratings, I don't know why the ratings went up, but I don't think they were for Christian. I hate to say that. I don't think so either. I think it was just Fallout But I think his performance, and, I think his performance, like in the things they did on Raw, made people hang around Raw longer than normal. I think it just went up because the usual fallout from the pay-per-view. That That's all that that's was. That's right. I forgot pay-per-view was Sunday. No wonder. It only went up by 200000 so it makes sense. Yeah, so it wasn't that much. Uh, WWE is now way behind schedule, allegedly, because they're still on standby as they wait for permission to enter the Performance Center. So, you know, they're they're a little bit far behind oh on God. tapings at this point in time. I mean, you would announce that the plan is to tape Raw, SmackDown, 205 Live, and main event for next week. Oh my so God. A, lot of the, a lot of the superstars are very frustrated because they're in a holding pattern. Some would have already been home by now. They would have gotten the tapings out of the way if they're traveling. So now they're just waiting around, waiting to see what's going to happen when, when they'll test. And at this rate, it says, we wonder if WWE would force to take an additional day of shooting because the test results are not immediate by any means, and they can't start if there are key people stuck outside waiting to get in. So, Oh, my God, dude. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> they're sitting there just waiting to go, and they're going to go in and film so that they can basically go home to be safe for next week while they, yeah, st- while they test everybody. Yeah, exactly. Meanwhile, so, right now, people could be in jeopardy. Backstage atmosphere and WWE is described as an asylum with everyone feeling like they're beyond stressed and losing their mind. Yeah. I, I believe that. We've known that it's been very disheartening backstage and people are, you know, at, at an all-time level of dismay. But uh, having a medical swab jammed into the back of your nasal cavity is nothing compared to the agony the WWE crew have experienced in the next day because they were so delayed. You know, they said that uh, the situation was described as watching the inmates run the asylum. And that's Bruce Pritchard, uh, Ed Kosky, Ryan Ward. So th- those are the the people in charge right now, tr- struggling to get things done. Yeah, and uh, superstars are presently not allowed in the building. So <laughs> executives and staff only. In. They can't get in, but AEW can get into their shows. Yeah, because AEW was testing each week. Didn't right. they say that they were testing stars? Well, why wasn't WWE testing? They're even bigger. Like you would think WWE that they was would... only doing temperature checks. That's it. They were testing people's temperatures. They haven't actually tested for COVID yet. This is their first testing, to my understanding. Hmm, that's all my dentist did today. I got my temperature taken three times. Yeah. I mean, it, it's it's better than nothing, but, I mean, they'll do a screening where they ask you questions. Have you been out of the country? Do you feel sick at all? Do you have any of these symptoms? It's it's less than ideal, but it's better than doing absolutely nothing. But WWE can afford that to get to get the testing done, and they can afford to get the tests. So why not test people to to be really safe? This is why people like Roman Reigns and Kevin Owens aren't aren't coming to work because they can't risk it, especially Roman Reigns. This yeah. is why he's still not back because they just found out somebody was positive, and the staff didn't find out till WWE released the notice talk, after Raw. Talk about privileged, huh? All the yeah. other, all the other people uh, have to wrestle because they don't they're afraid of getting fired. Roman Reigns is such a big name in the company that he knows he can just be like "fuck you," I'm staying home, and you're still gonna well, keep paying me. Think about it though: if he said "fuck WWE," I'm staying home, and they were giving him a hard time, you know, like a CM Punk treatment, mm-hmm. and they were threatening to fire him. You know what type of media shitstorm he would cause? Yeah, because of his for, uh, for issue. Them. You're going to fire a man who, who dealt with, you know, oh, come on. He was yeah. cancer ridden and he's, you know, currently yeah. uh, that would be a nightmare PR uh, scenario for them. I think it's something right that he isn't it too that like he still like has to take medication for, for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's still, yeah. I think, going to be on medication for the his rest whole of his life. life I yeah, believe. it's, so, it's kind of like a keeping it at bay. Because he's in remission now doesn't mean it can't pop up at any time and his immune system is so susceptible to things, so. Yeah, so he gets that COVID, man. That could be a real problem. That could be a, a goner, you know, a, a curtain closing scenario. Uh, well, Daniel Bryan, you know, too. Like he, he, he's got a problem too, but he's wrestling. Yeah, people have children at their homes and newborns. No, what does I Bryan mean, have? He's got a risk. He has some kind of compromised immune system, though. What is? What is? I don't remember what that is. But... I don't remember now. We looked it up when this was all first announced. Well, didn't they say? Didn't they not disclose it actually? So he's got something wrong with him that we don't know about. Isn't that? Isn't that I the think, case? I think you might be right. It was. It's been two months at this point, so I, I really don't recall, but. 
I know wow. there was there was there was an issue where he did have a you know in a compromised immune system. So, holy shit, bro! I forgot I forgot all about that. I yeah. hate your fucking guts. I'll kick your ass, motherfucker. <laughs> Look at how they're treating Sami Zayn and you know so many others. Sami Zayn didn't want to come to work, and they took away his title. Like you said, Roman's in that position where there would be a media shitstorm, and and he has fans on his side, as where Sami doesn't have the same outpouring. So, right to, to those that can stay home, it, it must be a nice position to have. Yeah, I mean, but it makes sense for Roman being sick. But yeah, it's like everybody else wants to probably do that same thing. Um. But uh, we're also getting, I forgot to tell you before, too, Sammy Guevara obviously accepted Matt Hardy's challenge. So he said, I want you to pick your poison. Think wisely about your future. Do you want to be the face of AEW or do you want to be a career bump guy for Jericho? Shall I be your savior or your deleter? And he put up four options. Do you want to face broken Matt Hardy, unkillable Matt Hardy, Whoa. the original first version Matt Hardy, or the elite Matt Hardy? So, Wow. I, I kind of hope we either get the unkillable or broken Matt Hardy gimmick. I was, um, I'm pretty much dialed out of Hardy. I thought he was going to come in. It's like, dude, how did this guy do this? He was amazing in Impact Wrestling. I thought he was going to come into WWE and that character was going to take over the whole company. And they did nothing. And then they did something too late and stupid. Now he comes to AEW and he started it off awesome like it started off like oh my god broken matt hardy that's awesome and it was so cool now it's taking a nosedive into i'm this character i'm that character i'm this character and i'm not i don't like this i'm not happy anymore i'm now i'm i want i'm not as captivated and enamored by what we've gotten with it so far but it, it it is uh still i think something that they can easily salvage and i think him feuding with Guevara is kind of a place they can take it to make it interesting again. Because right now he kind of seems like a schizophrenic with a bunch of personalities and none of them have really gotten a chance to shine. All he's done is some silly gimmick stuff in two very outlandish matches. You know, they had the big arena brawl and then they had the stadium stampede. So that's all we've really seen from Matt so far, sadly. Yeah. Yeah. But nostalgia is a powerful drug and I think that he's he's uh you know, very talented, and he'll be able to recover easily so long as they give him the chance to do so. I hope so. Right now, I'm just like, he's like in limbo and nothing. And it's like, I feel like he's in WWE almost. Like, I'm like, what the hell? I think he was good in that brawl that they had in the field, and that was the last time I thought, you know, everything else is just, I don't know. Maybe I'm just being ridiculous, but and I'm grumpy or something. I don't know, but that... I'm a little disappointed with where they went with that. Six three zero is on the phone. Hello. Hey, what's going on, man? What's up, buddy? Hey, so I, I know I was listening to the show. I just wanted to share uh, the biggest problem I see going on in wrestling today, uh, specifically AEW, just because it was on tonight, but obviously prominent in WWE too. And that, that's the announcing, Joe. The announcing is just. Terrible commentary. Terrible. You mean the commentary? It's if, bad. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Uh, I mean, what do you think about the commentary? Do you, do you think it's good at any point? Because I, mean, I can't find any commentary that's good. I'm assuming you're a newer listener, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that that's fine. Because I've I've gone on rants about this because I'm I do commentary for independent wrestling companies and like I I I can't stand the commentary. You know, I don't know what it is everywhere you know even AEW is something missing you don't get the vibe of anybody from WCW from early days anybody from WWE during any of the eras um in WWE especially you get this sort of controlled puppet like very almost like you're listening to the video game commentary there's no there's nothing real about it like Gorilla and Bobby Heenan could, could you could watch a match that was horrible and they would somehow make it good. You know, JR would add amazing excitement to the matches with Jerry the King Lawler. Vince McMahon. I would listen to Vince McMahon and Jerry Lawler from WrestleMania 10 called Bret Hart and Owen Hart. Um, it's exciting. But the commentary in WWE right now is is atrocious. And I think Morrow is pretty good with Nigel in NXT. And they could add Beth. That's okay. I think that's fine. Um 
So I would say that probably there's two guys at Booker T's wrestling uh, school or whatever, whatever he calls that. Was it? Um, uh, I forget what Booker T's independent wrestling thing is called, but um, I forget as well. Whatever it is, I should remember it, but I forget. Those two guys, the guy that Booker T does a co-host show with, and then the other guy, they do a great job. Those two guys are really good. Um, I really like them. They, they, they. They're kind of capturing the sports version of what they want the wrestling commentary to be. Um, reality so, wrestling. Reality wrestling, yeah. So they're really good. Um, NXT with Mauro, Nigel, and Beth is all right. I, I, I think that's pretty good. Probably the best thing going. Sometimes AEW is the best, um, depending on how Shivani and JR are feeling and how cringy, um, you know... Um, what uh, Excalibur can get. I think Excalibur is a great wrestling mind, and I love that he knows all the moves and things like that. He's really up on what's going on. But sometimes they just don't quite connect in, uh, with each other, and it's it's always kind of different sort of thing. What do you think about Excalibur on, in AEW? Oh, I think he's terrible, man. Yeah. <laughs> he may be a great wrestling mind, but on the mic, just get off. I'll have to uh, give those guys from Booker T's Wrestling School a shot, give them a listen. But, you know, the announcers overall... They don't make the they don't take the product seriously. Yeah. Mid match, they'll be laughing and giggling, or something that the performers are trying to get across is serious. They'll be giggling at it. You can't giggle at the product and expect fans to take it serious. The biggest you, problem I have with WWE, AEW, all. I want you to do this. Um, I will. I want you to well, yeah. Listen to the reality of wrestling guys and let me know what you think about them. Um, and then probably like Google some of my commentary or like YouTube some of my commentary and tell me what you think of mine. Like tell me you think you don't like that or that's too old timey or that's too new. Um, I do a lot of commentary where I'm heel or f usually I'm a, f I'm a regular commentator, but sometimes I go heel and stuff. But yeah, listen to that type of stuff. Let me know what you think about that stuff. But who in your mind is the greatest commentary team of all time? Ooh, of all time? Yeah. You know, I was just watching the wrestle or not wrestlemania the survivor series 96 they had it on fox sports one yesterday right and i was listening to vince mcmahon is it vince, vince is McMahon it vince jim is, ross and jerry lawler yes that was correct okay and jr was uh he was younger you could definitely tell he's, he's changed over the years for sure vince wasn't I'm letting him sure say I'm, much either he, vince vince wouldn't let him you know vince was still the guy and jr was like the third man in i guess or whatever yeah, that's correct. That's correct. I would, man, Vince for sure. I would say one of the greatest Vince, Bobby the Brain Heenan. Um, but as a team, I'm not sure if I could come up with the greatest team, just individual announcers, Joe. Yeah, well, um, hold on. Let me, I got someone on the phone with you. This is pretty crazy. Hold on. Go ahead. Go ahead, Ryback. Right yeah, hello. <laughs> Am I on the phone with this caller right now? Hey. Yeah, I'm here, man. What's up, man? You're, so you're a fan of wrestling? Do you know about Ryback? Uh, I, I think I've heard of him once or twice. He's uh, kind of like Goldberg, right? How old are you? No, you, I will fucking kill you. How old are you? How old are you? I'm 12. Um, yeah, maybe Pat Patterson would like that, but I don't like that. So, uh, that's, I'm not cool with that. But, uh, even though you are, could you, uh, could you possibly just say Grundle for me? Go ahead, just say Grundle. What was that, Ryback? My bad, I can't hear you. Uh, Grundle. Could you say Grundle for Ryback? Uh, Grundle. Oh, oh, God, 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 God. Oh, God, gurgle, gurgle, gurgle. Oh, oh, oh. Finish in him. All right, right. Well, what the hell, Ryback, man? Come on, dude. Why do you do that? He said he was 12. God. What the hell? What the hell, Ryback? He's trying to get you taken down, it seems like. And you're worried about Pat Buck fucking with old people's dicks? And you do that? Sick asshole. What the hell's wrong with you? Are you ready for this? Are you fucking ready? Are you ready? Ready for this? 
Cornette likes the Omega Finger Bang. Woo! Cornette likes the Omega Finger Bang. Yo, Robert Heller. Robert Heller coming in with the $11.50, making my tooth pain so much more bearable. I will finger myself. That brings me to this question, Robert Heller. Robert Heller, you have stoked the fire in my brain. Um, and thank you for the donations. Um, feel free to drop a thousand. No, I'm just kidding. I uh, know. Uh, <laughs> um, Jim Cornette, a lot of people speculating. He's been really friendly with FTR, talking with him on his podcast. Um, do you think that AEW would actually do the unthinkable? Because I really believe. I the fuck? I really believe it would be better if there was a crowd. But even though, you know, Cornette got fired for racial stuff, so maybe AEW would never, ever, ever want to get into that whatsoever. And Cornette doesn't even like AEW, really. But he kind of does, because that's all he ever talks about. And that's his best shows are shitting on AEW. So you kind of well, do like why, it. that's why, because he's all over it. So he calls it, you know, all petite wrestling and goes so in on everybody. That's why he'd be the perfect the heel manager in, in AEW. Uh, they got enough of them at this point, it feels like. They have enough mouthpieces. I mean, but no, I but see who, why Ted... But who's going to get booed? Game. Jim Cornette will get booed like crazy if he was in AEW. I don't know if he would unless what? he wanted to. He could He'd get come booed. in and be like, oh, listen, all you fucking garbage ass. This is the only tag team, blah, blah, blah. This is the tag team. These guys are the real business. They're going to show everybody else in this company. None of you wrestle the right way, obviously. Uh, all that type of stuff. And he can say all these terrible things, sort of these Ben saying on his podcast, but on the show, it would be, yeah, well, oh my God. When he interviewed FTR, you know, and the revival, he, he, a lot of people had said that he should have come in with them and been their manager. That would have been probably the best step forward, you know, a new Midnight Express, but not trying to be, you know, Midnight Express 2020, just a, a new team that he could know would be really competent in the ring and great in the tag division that he could get behind. What up? He's on the phone with us, Jake. It is Tommy. What did you think of AEW tonight, Tommy? I sadly did not watch it tonight. You, but I wanted to tell you something right. that strange had happened to me tonight. Did you it get, blew my mind. Oh, did you get raped? No. Um, somebody from my past showed up at my door and gave me something which I can't even eat. Our touch, honestly. Yeah, just, you know, I'm on a health cleanse, you know. Oh, somebody from your past, like a. They what? came and brought me this cheese balls and like three, two liters of of like two two liters of drink. This is the something that happened to you that you had to tell me about. Yeah. Who gives a shit? Someone brought you fucking. Someone brought you Cheetos. <laughs> Who cares? I thought you were going to say something <laughs> crazy, like something happened remember to guy, me today. Guy, Mickey. Remember the guy I left my apartment, Mickey? Yeah. Yeah. He came and apologized to me and gave me all this stuff tonight, randomly. Don't touch it. It's poisonous. Or he sneezed coronavirus all over it. I haven't touched it. You just touched it. And then you touched your face. That guy was a psycho. Oh, no, Tommy. That guy was in, like, in Antifa and crazy. And he was going to kill you a couple weeks ago. Now he's trying to be your friend. I smell a fish. Mm. And it ain't Crystal's pussy. I smell... I, <laughs> oh, my what is God. Your deal? What's your deal about trashing on Crystal like that? I don't know, man. I mean, I'm doing an AEW review, and then you call in, like, the most amazing thing, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh, my God, what is it? Hey, it wasn't an amazing thing. It was random. Just random out of the blue. Yeah, it's random because he's trying to kill you or something. Like, what? I don't believe this guy. I don't know either. Like, I haven't seen him in forever, and he just shows up at my door and drops all this stuff off on me. I'm like, I you can't eat this. I Your couch was still available. That's all he wants. Do you think, um, yeah, he want, maybe he wanted to come in to, did he, he left at your door, right? He didn't come in your apartment. No, he didn't come into my apartment. He just handed it all to me. And I'm like, he's like, I'm sorry. I was in a bad place, Tommy. And I'm just like, okay. And then he just left. And he's in rehab going through the 12 steps. Like, you know? And he didn't say much what? after that. He just left. I love it. Only Tommy could we be doing an AEW review and Tommy called me like something crazy happened to me. And it was some, and then, what, oh my God, what is it? This guy who was an asshole to me came back and he dropped off a 
food and drinks for me. Hey, are they sealed? Are the Pepsi not just bottles any food. sealed? Yeah, they're all sealed. Food. Everything's sealed. Like, like they're not open. It's all sealed. Hmm. You know what you should do is make a video with his name and the title, uh, and pour pour the Pepsi all over your dick and your body and like just all over yourself, and then <laughs> no. and then start just jerk off all over the Pepsi and the and the puffs and the cheese Cheetos or whatever they are, and then send and they all forget you when you eat it off me. Yeah, yeah, and they and then and then tag them on Facebook blur out the naked part blur out your body parts and stuff like that but put it on Facebook and then tag him on Facebook and show him what you did with the supplies <laughs> pass no thank you I'm telling you man that will, that's a great way to get him back it's a it's a phenomenal thing to do clam baked in the chat says um, how much to ban Tommy off the show <laughs> clam baked wants to ban you um you ban Tommy god damn um, well, it would take a lot more. dollars to ban me. No, it would take oh. a lot more than that, and Tommy wouldn't get any of it. But um, eight million. It would take. Oh, thanks, uh, Joe. Appreciate that. Well, you're welcome. You get enough, you sack of shit. It would be because uh, both Bullfrog was two thousand. Bullfrog was two thousand. So, you know, that was a lot. I'm actually. Were you surprised, Tommy, that that hit the mark? That we hit the mark on Bullfrog. Yeah, I was well, I was well, he really didn't add anything. He still tries to contact me. Oh, Tommy, I'm still trying to contact you to have you on my show or I can talk to you. And I'm like, I'm not interested in talking with you. For it off. Like, I don't want to talk with you. Like, you know, he tries making a new account. So he tries messaging me. And I'm like, I don't want to talk to you, man. I really don't want to talk to you. Right. Yeah, I don't think it has anything to do with that Eric Conley in the chat because I don't I'm literally doing my own show for like three hours, so I don't even know what you're talking about, you dumb fucking idiot. Um I've literally been live for three hours doing this show, um, as I as I always do. So no that what you said doesn't make sense because no one has the time. And now you're banned from the chat. Uh just like I banned uh, many other people. Um Clam Baked is looking to ban Tommy though, he's got an inch for you. Um Tommy, what's in that cabinet behind you? What's in the cabinet? Is there a dildo in that cabinet that you could possibly, um... No, just a bunch of random, just, like, a bunch of random stuff, you know, in All right. here. Alright, here's what I want you to do. Here's what we're gonna, we're gonna play a game. It's a game show here on the Joe Cronin Show during the AEW review. Um, <laughs> I want you to find in your apartment the, the thing, uh -huh. the thing that most looks like. I know you don't have one, but obviously you're not a girl. But, um, the thing that most looks like a dildo in your apartment. Like if you were to like go grab the thing that looks most like a dildo and show it to everybody. Let's let's see what it is. Okay, uh, it's not a dildo, but you know. Yeah, I know it's the closest thing to one. Like the what could what could die. come on? Like yeah, get like, creative. There's a girl there, and she's like, just stick anything in me that's like it. What? Oh my god! What is that? Good god! Oh my god! Ah! Oh my god! You ridiculous piece of shit! Oh my good god, my god! I play games where you get fucked to death. <laughs> do you use wow. the big end or do I use a small end? <laughs> yeah, baby, use the big end. Hang on, she's kinky. She's like, well, I can take the big end. <laughs> can you? You Damn. can wait. Let me see the other part because the axe could double up. Let me see that axe. Well, you might. Oh no, it couldn't. But you know. Train of hookers on Man. there. This would kill somebody, okay? That, like that, if you would use this as a, this would kill somebody, okay? <laughs> no, Tommy, you haven't. Can you imagine born. explaining that to the police? I'm so, um, son, what were you trying to do exactly? Uh, I was trying to pleasure her, son. Why did you take a, why did you take a wooden axe and shove it up her crotch? She told me to, sir. You killed her. Uh, she was enjoying it. She was going ah ah ah, and next thing I know, she went. Eh. And I'm like, uh, oops. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> she went, uh, uh, uh. Can you, can you, she went, uh, uh, uh. I wish you could have seen his face, Tommy. The face you made when you did that was amazing. Um, take a look at this. You though. heard it right here, Joe. Tommy fucks to death. That's what that's what he just said. I can't he see anything, Joe. Oh yeah, I'll show you right now. Hold on a minute. Take a look at this. Right, she's gonna. This chick is is wild. Um, well, let me see here. All right, what am I doing? All right, here it is. I had to pull it up. Takes me a second to pull things up because I have my tooth done today, Tommy. My face is numb. Uh, here it is. Uh, oh, I've had that feeling too, man. I've had gone got dentist surgery myself. 
Oh, God, and no. like, this is the most painful I've ever been after the numbness wore off. I don't know why. You think he did surgery himself? They did surgery themselves. What do you think about this girl, uh, Tommy? <laughs> Holy shit. It looks like, uh, it, it just looks like she, uh, has been punched in the face a bunch of times. <laughs> <laughs> she kind of looks hey, like. At least AEW is trying. You know, they're trying to make interesting characters. You know, yeah. unlike WWE. Yeah. Ask him if she thinks she swallows or not. You gotta ask Tommy. You can't hear me. Oh yeah, Tommy. Uh, ask her if she. Uh, do you think she swallows? What do you do? You think she swallows? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> it's so fucking weird. Yeah, it's fucking it looks like she person. swallows period blood from what I'm looking at. Oh, my God. I think it's just her gimmick. I don't know what her gimmick is. You know, uh, I'm not going to I'm not trying to say this to make you angry. I'm not saying this. I don't even think this is true. And I'm obviously this doesn't look like anybody because it's like so gothic and whatever. But somebody said she looked like Debe earlier. Oh, my God. Shut up. I mean, they just said that. I don't think so. I mean, like, look at looking at her. I don't think so. I mean, a little bit, but it's she's the eyes. It's the Stop eyes. Stop it, Joe. Yeah, I think Please. it's the, it's the period blood. No, um, but no. So what's been else up? How's COVID doing out there? Uh, uh, everything's peaceful. Uh, apparently, on Friday there is going to be a black black uh, a Black Life Matters. Uh, black Lives uh, Matter. Of what is it? Protest. protest, protest in Black Mountain on Friday. Oh my God! There's gonna be a protest in Black Mountain. Yeah, in yeah, Black Mountain. Are the they gonna go? The are town. they gonna dig are up? They trying to get the black people out? Or? So are they gonna do what they're doing around the country? So they're gonna go find your grandfather's grave and they're gonna oh, demand. Shut up, Joe! Shut the fuck up! <laughs> he doesn't even, like my father. My grandfather's not even buried in North Carolina. Don't tell anybody where he's buried. Um, I'm not. Okay, tell good. Him. Good. Um, so what's there that people could really tear up? Like what type of Confederate well, flag? I, I, you... I don't know. If, uh, hopefully Statues. it's a peaceful protest. Like I hope. Uh, hopefully it's a peaceful to protest because my God, Black Mountain would burn to the ground. Like if there was ever like a riot in Black Mountain. Well, I mean, you tried that once before. It didn't work. So I don't think. I think it'd be fine. So, ha ha ha! <laughs> <laughs> I and mean, these just keep getting set up. No, but uh, I think it'll be fine. Um, Home run, folks. Home run. Are there any are the are the protesters all going to be white people? I have no idea. Like I'm not even going to go to it. I'm just I, oh, on Friday. I'm going to see my parents. Protesting. So like I'm not even going to that protest really. Well, I thought it was a peaceful rally, not a protest. Or is it a protest? It's a protest, I guess. You know, that's what that's what they do in Black Lives Matter. You know, that that group is they protest, yeah. and they apparently rip down monuments and statues of iconic figures in in the United States. Racists. And honestly, I, I think that there's there's some people behind uh, saying that they're Black Lives Matter, but they're not. And I think there's some there, there's uh, some people behind this doing shit, defacing monuments and shit like that right you like so you like uh you think the south should rise again and we should oh take the american I flag don't think the south should rise. why are you joe why do you do that all the time to me well i'm just saying that i'm going i'm playing devil's this is called devil's advocate you know you're going that way well, so no, i'm gonna I go don't the other think way the south, i don't think the south should rise but i don't think they should ban the confederate flag you know it's it's ridiculous the symbol of oppression for uh black people you don't think they should ban the symbol of oppression well, it's also a part of history. You know, it's a part of the, history. The so Nazi, why, why, the why Nazis. Why that? It's a part of history. The Nazi flag is a part of history. So should people, we should we fly that around? That's different. Well, that's, different that's a different standard. So like, but apparently the Nazi flag actually, I, I learned that the Nazi flag actually, before it became the, before it was a Nazi flag, it was apparently for a church. Apparently. Yeah, yeah. Originally, originally it was an okay thing sort of thing. And then it became uh Something crazy, but um, but yeah, so yeah. Look at should... this: 1933, Hitler appointed uh, people in but charge. Let's get back to, to your review, Joe, and you guys police. have a good night, okay? All right, Tommy, thank you for calling, man. And uh, listen, I'll see you at the uh, pro-right uh, Ku Klux Klan rally in a couple weeks. All right? Oh fuck you, Joe. Oh sorry. All right, bye. I love you, Tommy. Bye. <laughs> see, I didn't get. I wanted to get Tommy's opinion on that, but I'll have to, I'll have to bother <laughs> him next time.
That was fun. Because you know, Hitler wanted to defund the police and eliminate police departments so that they would not interfere with his brown shirts, whose mission it was to riot, burn, beat up, and kill citizens in an effort to sway the elections. Trailbound's right. He said that's why they don't want you to learn and remember yeah. history, because it repeats itself. Oh, yeah, because that's how you do it. The playbook is already there for everybody. Yeah, defund the police, and then they can't stop you. But, um... And and you think you're doing the right thing because it's the right because bad things are happening. So you're like, oh, we're doing the right thing, but then in the end, somebody takes advantage of it. It's just like um, how they the Patriot Act and the and the way the internet they can just spy on us now and everything. We signed it all away in 2004, blow up the towers, signed away our freedoms. So the terrorists did win. They took away our freedoms, uh, and they wanted to. Um, we basically talked about all this already. We already talked about Aunt Jemima. We talked about that half the show or whatever. We talked about the other things. We talked about all of AEW. We talked about wrestling. We talked about the world. And we talked about Jake DeMarco's uh, family uh, wanting to uh, live with me instead of him. Uh, it's been wild. It's been a wild time. Yeah, they, you know, <laughs> they made their peace with it. So I, I accept their stance. I love you. Can we just marry each other? We need to already. We should just. I put fuck. out. We should so. fuck each other. You got All right. No worries there. So that being said, everybody, we're out of here. I think we talked about everything we could. We took all the calls we could. We had a good time. And my tooth is jacked up, and uh, you're done. What anything else you want to say, uh, Jake? Before we uh, roll out of here? No, that's it. Good AEW tonight, and I'm excited for next week's show. There's oh. a lot to be looking forward to, and then we have Fighter Fest shortly after that. So the week after that, next week is Fighter Fest. Go home. So gonna be a hell of a night then, and we'll see you all tomorrow night for Out of Nowhere. We will see you on Out of nowhere motherfucker out of nowhere doo, 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 doo. i don't know what anybody says about me i'm doing a show right now how can i know what people are saying about me if i'm doing a show you dildo oh uh, wait a minute we got a donation coming in here we go I'm about people to get talk it, about me all the here time bro i don't get it, man. Here we i don't go. bother with it here we go here we go oh, oh, oh. you basically see why i don't work with people you know Tommy made fun of a disabled person on Twitter today. He has no room to talk about politics. Let the big boys speak. Tommy made fun of a disabled person. Really? I mean, he is a disabled person. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, I don't know. Who did he make? What, it, Ricky Berwick? He always makes fun of Ricky Berwick. He hates Ricky Berwick. Tommy has hated him, him for I think he ever. keeps him out. He's always hated Ricky Berwick because Ricky Berwick is like, and like gets more viewers than he does. So he's like super jealous about it. It's crazy, dude. It's crazy. Jacob, I don't know Not what wrong. you... Jacob, I don't know what you want me to talk about because I don't know what you're talking about. So I don't know what... I don't know what you're talking about. So I can't talk about something I don't know what you're talking about. How can I talk about something I don't know about? <laughs> like, How can you yeah. say who is this is? The thing I, that, yeah, I don't... that says who is this is. I don't know what you're saying, <laughs> Jacob. Um, <laughs> so anyway. I used to screw with people in high school with that. You know, and be like, did you get that thing? What thing? The thing I sent you. What thing? You know, you just keep it up. Come yeah, on, same yeah. thing. <laughs> like it's like it's like I'm paying attention. That was like the time somebody was like, you know, JD said this thing about you or whatever, and I'm like, I've been live for three hours, bro. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, we um, don't have a, a you know <laughs> NASA computer ready to hack the world set up in the corner to, to monitor every NASA G. You know, what's up, NASA? Show. Shout out to NASA, Mrs. Buttersworth. Um, what do you think about that, NASA? I wonder. Um, yeah, we talked about it a lot tonight, though. We talked about it. Shout out to Clam Baked. We'll talk about that, Clam Baked. We'll figure something out, brother. Uh, Clam Baked lives right near me. I got to drive down to Clam Baked, and me and him got to have a boxing match. You got to get Clam Baked. In a pool. In his pool. Filled with KY. Oh, you want to do the old school thing? Oh, yeah. I've always thought about that, but, uh, huh. Get my boy, bro. James Mesner, man. Thank you for that. And listen, also shout out to, uh, the champ, five-time champ of the wheel on Monetize This, D. Welsh, baby. D. Welsh. Um, three W's, uh, A.W. Yeah, I've been, I guess, five hours I've been busy. I've been yeah, watching A.W. and then this. Yeah, absolutely. Um, James Mesner, thank you, man. And, yeah, so D. Welsh, five-time champ. Who's going to be the champ this Friday night on Monetize This? I don't know. You don't know. Tomorrow night is Thursday, so we got um, I don't know where we're going on. Should be good to go with that. Um, we'll take your calls out of nowhere, see what the wrestling news is, and uh, probably do video games after that, too. So I'll be gaming tomorrow night after out of nowhere. I don't know, a box, I don't know, a clam bake, like a boxing match or something. I don't know, like like a fun boxing match, you know, like a, like we don't really hurt each other. Yeah, you could spar. Yeah, like a spar. 
Or like if we don't, or we can just smoke weed. I mean, whatever. We can just smoke weed. That's fine too. <laughs> we can play video games. Plant. Yeah, we can play video games and jerk each other off. We can do that too. Bro jobs. Bro jobs. I'll leave the yeah. I'll go yeah. I would do it. Um, shout out to Soundwave ninety two and everybody who's been donating all night long tonight. Kisses to you, and especially to Soundwave ninety two, who is the top donation drop of the night, taking home that JCS. Digital Championship Sunwave 92. You guys can hit me up on Twitter at JCS Commentary. You guys can hit up Jake at Countdown Ended. His Twitter is bigger than mine now. It's crazy. Go give him some love on Twitter. Go give me some love on Twitter. Um, Patreon is on fire. So thank you guys for that. You can now search crazy on Patreon. Pretty badass that you guys can do that now. That is uh, something we've been begging Patreon for. For years, I spoke to them several times. I'm like, dude, can you put a fucking search feature? And now we have the search feature, so you guys can go back and you guys can hear. No, nobody else is talking about this, by the way. I've like, I'm like following, like, I'm literally following some of the like big YouTubers, big YouTubers, big people on Patreon. Not one person has mentioned this. Like, nobody will either, unless they see me mentioning it. Unless somebody sees me mentioning this, they will never tell you about this because I, I have been listening for weeks. No one, not a peep from anybody. And I'm talking about guys with like fucking 14,000 patrons and they don't even tell their patrons about this. Search posts. You guys can search back to episode five of Morning Madness, episode 100 of Morning Madness. My weird Michael Jackson song. You can search that. It pops right up. Boom, you're good to go on your phone or desktop. Then you can download it to your phone, download it to your computer, download everything you want, whatever. Your patron, you can download it all, whatever. Thanks to the people that went up to the $10 VIP spots and the $25 producer level tiers. Um, and now you can do all that bullshit. So I hope you guys know about that. And uh, sub to my other channels. Steve Kalan is right in the chat. Corrupted Nation and Evil Spectrum 3 plus um, Twitch, twitch.tv slash Joe Cronin JCS. There. I think I plugged everything I needed to plug. Yeah, I don't want a box either, really. I'm down with that. You're right. Because I might get, we might get hit in the head or something. We get tired, you know. Yeah, forget boxing. Let's just jerk each other off. Let's just do that. Let's make it a love fest. Yeah, let's make it a suck fest. All right, guys. We are out of here. Goodbye. We'll see you next time. Email me, Joe Cronin Show at yahoo.com. Or you can DM me on Patreon. I guess Twitter, maybe, but Patreon or wherever. I thank you all One for more the donation love. coming in. Hello, James Mesner, not calling you a liar. Here we go, I'm about to get it, man. Here we go, I'm about to get it, man. Here we go. Here we go, here we go. Oh, 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 yeah, I'm reading no. the article now. Oh, okay. Not calling you a liar, Jake, <laughs> but the Hitler defending the police claim was proven false by multiple sources. Just send you an article. Uh, defunding, I think it meant, but yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so good, that never happened. Well, good. To certain extents, but not to the outright that the article says. So, because the brown shirt still exists, and see, I got to read more on it. But still, this, history repeats itself. The misinformation that's out there is ridiculous. That's lovely, but hey, you take things at face value. That's what you get. That's why I say, take everything I say with a grain of salt. <laughs> yeah, take everything I say with a super grain of salt. I couldn't even get out of the fucking high school. Um, thanks, James Mesner. Love you, brother. Good shit. Thank you for that. Last minute dono, man. Appreciate it. All goes in the bank. Love you guys. Thank you for signing up on Patreon. Brad77. I don't know what the 77 stands for. I don't know. Ray Bork or something like that. You're a hockey fan. I don't know. But, dude, thank you for becoming a Patreon man and joining the JCS Army. The entire Patreon family is waiting to hug you over there on the Patreon. I hope you guys all talk shit to each other on the Patreon. You should just be talking shit about each other. Just shit on each other on all the posts. It'll be a lot of fun. A lot of fights. We'll get into fights with each other. No, I'm just kidding. We're a big loving family of kissers over there. That's what we do. That's what we do on Patreon. Come on over to the Patreon, man. I got Note to Self coming up tomorrow. Me and my wife's podcast is coming up. People have been really waiting for that one. Episode 20-something or other fucking whatever. Um, and then we got Tommy NC and me. We got honestly coming out. That's a big one. Me and Jake are going to continue doing our weekly podcast. 
And then there's a couple new exciting things around the way and some faces who are coming back who you're going to love. And then we're going to take the world and F it in the face. Shout out to everybody in the chat, man. I love you all. Um, sorry I disappointed a couple people. I guess I don't know about the drama that goes on with other people. I don't do that over here, as you've known for the last... Every time you watch my show, I don't talk about that stuff. I couldn't care. Let, save the drama for the drama people and the scumbags and the sleazy people. Um, you know, if I have to address something, I, I've addressed everything I've ever had to address before, like months ago. I'm, I'm so done with it. I don't know why you're... Just, you know, leave me alone already. Come on. Leave people alone, dude. What's wrong with people? People just can't stop, bro. They can't stop doing it. I guess, from what I'm hearing. But that's how, uh, that's what the, that's, you know, you see who people really are. You know what I mean? You find out who people really are and it becomes pretty obvious. I'm out, yo. I hate your fucking guts. I'll kick your ass, motherfucker. So sorry about that, Jacob Fuego. But Jacob Fuego, I appreciate it anyway, man. Jacob Fuego. Just not gonna get into that. Lovey dovey. Hit me up on Twitter. I'm gonna tweet something really messed up in a minute. So jump over to Twitter at Joe Cronin com or I'm sorry, JCS commentary. And get on the Patreon. Because I'm gonna be spitting some shit on the Patreon tomorrow. I'm gonna be spitting some shit on the Patreon tomorrow. So you wanna be part of that. Um, I'm gonna be putting up the questions. Look for the questions. Get the questions out there. Ha la 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 ha. You can use it! Jackson song, man. You gotta get on the Patreon, everybody. That. We need the pumpkin. Give, bring it on. All right. Good night, Janky Poo. Good night, everybody. Go download uh, Never Leaving Neverland on uh, Patreon. How about Blumpkin? Let's do some Blumpkin. We're out with Blumpkin. Good night, everybody. For real. Yo, yo, nobody. Wait a minute. Let's hear. Uh, let's hear Ryback say he's gonna get. I sent him a message and just personally let him know the other day. I'm gonna. I what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get uh, Pat Buck fired from uh, WWE and then I'm gonna give a fuck. Um, let's listen to uh, Ryback fail at firing Pat Buck again. That I'm going to personally get him fired when I'm fucking healthy if he doesn't get fired before that and enjoy the ride short term that he's up there. So, <laughs> and I know the, uh, his buddy wants to say you're supposed to be a motivational speaker or uh, speaker and be positive. I am, but there, I, I'm also, I don't put up with little bitches and I'm a fighter at the end of the day. And yeah. if the guy's going to run his mouth and Pat was running his mouth to other promoters is speaking ill of me that I'm, that I'm an asshole and that I'm horrible to work with. All I say is ask any promoter I've ever worked for old man and robbed him of nearly a million dollars. These people robbed his buddy KM and fucking Pat and all these other crew of guys were doing homosexual wrestling activities with an old man. <laughs>
<laughs> oh my god. Oh, pussy. Here we go. You wanna do it? Yeah, you got that blumpkin. You got that blumpkin pussy juice. That fucking cunt, that fucking juice is on the loose. That pussy screws all of the men. Pumpkin cunts. Once it's in my mouth, I'll swallow all your juice. Pumpkin, fucking cunt, pussy juice. That cunt is on the loose, that pussy juice. I want that pumpkin cunt, pussy juice. Nom, 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 nom. Pumpkin cunt, pussy juice. All I want in my mouth, I can take. All of it is dripping down my throat so wet Blumpkin cunts Pussy juice Blumpkin cunts It's all I want from you oh, oh. I smell it from here, I smell it from there I eat through your underwear I nibble it up, I gobble it all I make your pussy and your panties fall I want to withdraw your fucking cunt Your beef of me is on my front, I fucking lick it up my tongue. Da 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 I want it so bad I can taste it from here I wanna munch it, I'll munch your rear I will munch every part of you Cause I want that cunt and pumpkin juice Pussy juice That pumpkin cunt pussy juice Blumpkin cunt pussy Blumpkin cunt pussy juice